go visit them outside. Just
Subalit hindi lahat ng kanilang pangarap ay matutupad. Ang human trafficking ay pananamantala sa pangarap ng isang tao at pag-akit upang gamitin sa kapakanan ng nananamantala. Paano nila ito ginagawa? Ang human trafficking ay hindi nagaganap ng agaran. Ito ay isang proseso. Ang unang gawain ng isang human trafficker ay ang pangangalap ng biktima. Pagdadala sa kanila patungo sa lugar na kung saan sila ay aabusuhin. Pagtatago sa mga otoridad at pagtanggap ng mga biktima mula sa iba pang mga ngalakal. Bakit hindi tumatakbo at humihindi ang mga biktima? Dahil ang mga human trafficker ay gumagamit ng iba't ibang paraan, gaya ng pananakot o pagpilit sa biktima na gawin ang gusto nila, pagdukot o paglinlang sa biktima at pangaabuso. Minsan, ang human trafficker ay nangangako ng maliit na bayad o benepisyo upang makipagtulungan ang biktima. Bakit ito ginagawa ng mga human trafficker? Ang pakay nila ay pagsasamantala. Ang trafficker ay nananamantala ng kanilang biktima para sa pangsariling kita at kapakinabangan. Ito ang human trafficking. Sinabi ng kapitbahay ng taong ito na mayroong magandang trabaho para sa kanya sa isang ligtas na konstruksyon at babayaran siya ng malaking pera. Sa pamamagitan ng maraming pera ay matutupad na ang kanyang mga pangarap. Siya ay pumayag na kunin ang inalok na trabaho. Matapos ang ilang araw, sinundo at isinakay siya ng kaibigan ng kanyang kapitbahay patungo sa lugar ng konstruksyon malayo sa kanilang bahay. Ang taong ito ay agad na pinagtrabaho ng walang pagsasanay o kagamitan para sa pananggalang. Walang sapat na pagkain at inumin at madalang na pahinga. Pagkatapos ng maraming buwan, siya ay binayaran ng maliit na bahagi ng naipangako sa kanya. Ang taong ito ay biktima ng human trafficking. Siya ay narekrut ng kanyang kapitbahay at nalinlang sa pag-aakala na siya ay magkatrabaho sa isang ligtas na konstruksyon at may sapat na bayan. sa hindi ligtas na lugar at halos walang bayan habang ang iba habang sa panimantala sa kanya. Isang araw, habang naghahanap ng trabaho sa internet, ang babaeng ito ay nakakita ng oportunidad na makapagtrabaho sa restaurant sa isang malaking syudad. Naging matagumpay ang kanyang aplikasyon at inayos ng kanyang employer ang kanyang pagbiyahe. Siya ay sinalubong sa paliparan at dinala sa isang bahagi ng lungsod na hindi ayon sa kanyang inaasahan. Huminto ang sasakyan sa isang gusali. Isinara at ikinandado ang pinto. Siya ay pinilit na gumawa ng mga sexual na akto na labag sa kanyang kalaoban. Siya ay nakakulong. Ang babaeng ito ay biktima ng human trafficking. Siya ay dinala ng trafficker mula sa paliparan patungo sa lugar ng kanyang trabaho. Nang siya ay dumating sa lugar ng pagtatrabahuan at nalaman na ito ay hindi trabaho sa restaurant, inasahan niya na siya ay gagamitan ng lakas at dahas ng kanyang trafficker upang manatili siya doon. Siya ay pinagsamantalahan at pinilit para gumawa ng aktong sexual. Habang bakasyon sa eskwela, ang labing apat na gulang na batang ito ay nilapitan sa lansangan ng isang mukhang magpagkakatiwala ang babae. Sinabi niya na siya ay nangangailangan na manggagawa sa kanyang pabrika. Pinangakuan niya ang bata na bibigyan ng maraming pera. Dinala at ipinakilala ng bata ang babae sa kanyang mga magulang at natuwa sila sa alok nitong trabaho. Siya ay magkakaroon na ng ipon para sa kanyang pag-aaral. Siya ay dinala ng babae patungo sa kasunod na lungsod. Kuminto sila sa isang lumang gusali at may isang tao na naghihintay na sa kanya. Habang siya ay pinapapasok sa gusali, agad na umalis ang babae. Ang pabrika ay hindi kahintulad sa inilarawan ng babae. Maraming tao ang nagtatrabaho kasama ang maraming bata. Siya ay nagtrabaho sa buong maghapon at pagkatapos ng maiksing oras na pagtulog, siya ay nagsisimula muli. Hindi ito ang kanyang inaasahan. Siya ay nangulila sa kanyang pamilya. Makalipas ang ilang linggo ay hindi pa din siya nakakatanggap ng sweldo o kaya ay pinapayagan na makatawag sa kanyang pamilya. Siya ay nakulong. Ang batang ito ay biktima ng human trafficking.
Siya ay nalinlang ng babaeng nakausap niya sa lansangan. Siya ay tinanggap ng trafficker noong siya ay dumating sa pabrika at pinagsamantalahan sa pamamagitan ng sapilitang paggawa sa patahian. Ang sino mang may edad na ding walong taong bulang pababa, ang akto at layunin ay sapat na upang maging legal na kaso ng human trafficking. Ang pagintindi na ang human trafficking ay hindi nangyayari ng agaran bagkus ito ay isang proseso ng akto, paraan at layunin ay makatutulong upang mas makilanlan ang mga naging biktima at malaman ang kalakaran ng trafficking. Ang mga tao ay nangangarap at naghahanap ng oportunidad upang maisak Again, good morning, everyone. We are here gathered as first part on several talks of the St. Josephine Bakita Lecture Series on Freedom, Identity, and Discipleship by the Archdiocese of Cáceres through the Cal CP Office in partnership with the Theology Department of the Ateneo de Naga University. Now we shall now commence our activity with an opening prayer. After the prayer, please remain standing for the Philippine National Anthem. Please rise. We remind ourselves that we are and always enveloped by the presence of the Trinity, as we say, in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Josephine Bakita. Saint Josephine Bakita, you were sold into slavery as a child and endured unspeakable hardship and suffering. Once liberated from your physical enslavement, you found the true redemption in your encounter with Christ and His Church. O Saint Bakita, help those who are trapped in slavery intercede on their behalf with the God of mercy so that the chains of their captivity will be broken. May God himself free all those who have been threatened, wounded, or mistreated by the trade and trafficking of human beings. Bring comfort to survivors of this slavery and teach them to look to Jesus as an example of hope and faith so that they may find healing from their wounds. We ask you to pray for us and to intercede on behalf of us all, that we may open our eyes and be able to see the misery and wounds of our many brothers and sisters, deprived of their dignity and their freedom, and may we hear their cry for help. Amen. Now take your seats. Thank you. Before we begin, may I introduce myself? 
I am John F. Elgarol Simpson, also a Theology Department faculty. I'll be your host and at the same time moderator for today's activity. Now to welcome us this morning, may I call in Ms. Gloria Cores, an Antonio Chairperson of the Theology Department, to give us the welcome address. Ma'am Glo. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you, our school administrators, our dear speakers, dear students here in campus, those who are joining us online, and to the subscribers of the Archdiocese on Facebook page to this first of the lecture series on online sexual abuse and exploitation of children, the modern phase of human trafficking. We in the Theology Department of Atenea de Naga University take this partnership with the Caceres Office for Women and Children Protection as an opportunity to serve the church towards ending human trafficking in various forms. We believe that our students, when equipped with proper knowledge and formed family values, can serve as key voices in promoting justice to every moral fiber of the society. Yes. We recognize you, our dear students, as key voices in this societal discourse, being a part of the current generation who will be the principal formators of the kind of society we want for the next generation. And to our dear parents who are joining us online, may you find meaning as you journey with your children. In the next hours, we will be guided as a community by the address of His Grace, Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Tirona, OCDDD, and thereafter, to equip us with the legal basis of this, our shared responsibility on the lecture of the Republic, Republic Act 11930. Then we'll be ushered into a reflection of the complexities of human trafficking and the response of the Filipino family. The last part will help us understand and appreciate this challenge to take part in this Christian responsibility. That is to journey together as we help these people who are at the margins of the society, our peripheries. May this lecture be our way of responding to the challenges of synodality among us or among our poor, abused brothers and sisters in the society. We ask the intercession of St. Joseph and Bakita the patroness of modern trafficking to intercede for us and to pray for us, of course. And so together we say, or we respond, pray for us after this one. Saint Joseph and Bakita, pray for us. Once again, I warmly welcome you to this lecture. Thank you, Ma'am Glo. At this juncture, the Archbishop of Cáceres, Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Terona, OCD, DD, will give his keynote address. Let us listen to his address through the AVP. Human trafficking is the second largest criminal enterprise in the world after narcotics. 
every year, thousands of men, women and children are trafficked in their own nations and abroad. Forms of human trafficking include slavery, domestic work, sexual exploitation or prostitution, drug curing, and or making children into soldiers. As Pope Francis has repeatedly stressed, and I quote, it is a global phenomenon that exceeds the competence of any one community or country. To eliminate it, we need a mobilization comparable in size to that of the phenomenon itself." Unquote. However, with the global development of technology use exacerbated by COVID-19 epidemic and the migration of our daily lives to internet, human trafficking has seized cyberspace. The internet and digital platforms provide traffickers with a plethora of tools, all with greater speed, cost effectiveness, and anonymity. In Asia's Western Pacific, human trafficking in the Philippines is a considerable concern. It is one of the largest victim populations in the world, with an estimated 784,000 people. Moreover, the Philippines is one of the largest known sources of online sexual exploitation of children, the hot spot with an estimated 50,000 Filipino children under 15 years old employed as domestic workers. In total, estimates say that between 60,000 and 100,000 Filipino children are impacted by either labor or sex trafficking activities. The, OSS, the OCSE cases has been rising every year. During the COVID-19 pandemic, tips are reported to have increased to 264%. Some blame poverty, some blame unemployment, others still blame illiteracy and others play moral degradation as the reason for these abuses. When we remain ignorant, detached, apathetic, and live in pretensions, when we shut our hearts to the cry and pleas of our brothers and sisters, and worse, prefer indifference over concern for them, and in despite these best efforts of ours would be disregarded, then who will do it? But Jesus said, the poor will always have them with you. That is why I urge you to be awakened, take action, get involved in the efforts to end abuses. My dear parents, teachers, students, and to the viewers and listeners of today's gathering, now you begin to take part in a worldwide mobilization of fraternity, solidarity, and commitment capable of remedying the indifference in which human trafficking thrives. Your young minds and hearts and passion, empowered by competence, conscience, character, and Christ-centeredness will drive you to be part of the solution to this being problem. You may not be able to change the world on your own, but encouraging others to participate, you can make a difference. We can and must all work together to end the exploitation and enslavement of many men, women, and children. Prayer is the driving element behind our collective efforts. Allow your voice to change the world, one child, one victim at a time. When we come together for this cause of fighting human trafficking and any forms of abuse against children and women, then the Lord is with us. And when the Lord is with us, we are assured of victory, we are assured of freedom. God bless you all.
Thank you, Archbishop, for setting this to the tone for our um, activity this morning. Our first team of speakers is from Ateneo de Naga University, College of Law Students. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome and listen now to the input of Dr. Stephen Jotia Bonilla and Ms. Jessica L. Chua, who will talk about the Republic Act 11930, the Anti-Online Sexual Abuse or Exploitation of Children Act of 2022. Let's all welcome them with a warm of applause. Thank you. As technology advances, new online sexual crimes against children are being created. Sexual predators who used to abuse children in person are now provided the internet as a platform to abuse children anywhere. And they are usually highly adept in the use of modern technology to cover their tracks from law enforcement. This emerging crime is called online sexual exploitation of children and it takes many forms. Online grooming is when a predator compliments or befriends a child with the intention of obtaining the child sexually ex In some cases, online grooming can lead to in-person child sexual abuse. Live streaming is when a child is forced to appear naked in front of a webcam. Sometimes, a paying customer forces a child to perform sexual acts with another child or with an adult companion. Sextortion or blackmail is when a person threatens to publish a child's sexually explicit images if the child does not cooperate or send more materials. These types of content multiply online and become part of a whole universe of child sexual abuse materials, which are consumed by sexual predators everywhere. Delving deep into the crime of online sexual exploitation of children can make us feel helpless. It is widespread and is silently operated inside the privacy of people's homes, unfortunately making it a family business. In most cases, the traffickers are people close to the victims, their parents, older siblings or relatives entrusted with their care. The customers are usually from Western countries, targeting vulnerable children from poor and developing countries like the Philippines. The victims. They tend to be very young even as young as infants, and based on reported cases, the victims are mostly girls. Although, recent studies now point to the equal vulnerability of boys to online sexual exploitation. This kind of abuse could last for many years without any interference or detection. And contrary to what one might expect, most transactions between traffickers and paying customers happen on the surface of the internet, rather than through the dark web or the hidden part of the internet. It is a widely acknowledged fact that the Philippines is extremely vulnerable to this type of crime. Law enforcement agencies abroad reported that the Philippines is receiving more than eight times as many referrals of cases of online sexual exploitation of children as any other country that they have monitored. Several factors come into play why the Philippines is such an ideal target. Widespread poverty, changes in guardianship due to migration, ability of Filipinos to speak English well, social norms that reinforce secrecy and victim blaming, and wide access to cheap internet and money transfer facilities. These factors are exacerbated when already vulnerable households get hit by an economic fallout due to disasters or a pandemic. There is no one magical solution to the increasing problem of online sexual exploitation of children. It is only in coming together by involving multiple sectors that we can address the challenges. For the government, it means stronger law enforcement and policies, 
better funding for prevention, intervention, and rehabilitation programs, and most importantly, getting to the root of the problem, the economic vulnerability of families. For internet service providers, tech companies, banks, money transfer facilities, and other businesses, this means taking up child protection obligations and creating innovative solutions for a safer internet. For parents and guardians, this means learning about responsible parenting in the digital age, which includes knowing how to protect your children against sexual predators online. And for children and young people, this means demanding accountability from our leaders, creating safe spaces with your peers where they can freely speak up and ask for help, and taking action by reporting abuse and exploitation. Marahay na aga po sa inyong lahat. A pleasant good morning to all of us and to those who are watching and listening via the social media. Magandang umaga po. Kamusta po kayo? Sige, let's have the first slide. The internet. Sino po sa atin dito ang uh, hindi alam kung ano ang internet? Uh, ibabalik daw po sa grade 1. Ano po ang internet? Sabi nung iba, it is a blessing. Uh, it's a blessing because we have uh, information right uh, sa fingertips natin. And we can learn a lot from, well, from the internet. Diyan po ako natuto magluto ng afritada, ng adobo, by watching uh, mga chef at mga international mga chef at mga vloggers na nagtuturo po ng iba't ibang paraan ng pagluluto. Some would say that it is also a curse. And, well, it could be used as a means to facilitate a crime or perhaps sexual abuse or exploitation. So let me say that internet could be perhaps both a blessing and a curse. And with this, we need to uh, know and take some responsibilities as regards to the use of the internet. Sinabi po ni, ni Sir Nelson Mandela that the true character of a society is revealed in how it treats its children. In the latest uh, study, na done, conducted by the UNICEF, nirelease po ito uh, just recently, last year, April 20, Disrupting Harm in the Philippines, Evidence on Online Child Sexual Exploitation and Abuse, they provided and reported that at least 2 million children in the Philippines were subjected to online sexual abuse and exploitation in the past year alone. 96% of 12 to 17-year-olds in the Philippines were done online, and they all face the risk of online sexual abuse and exploitation. Hence, the RA number 11930. I'm Dr. Stephen Bonilla. I'm a surgeon by profession. I'm associated and an affiliate consultant in the Department of Surgery in BMC in uh, Mother Seton and also in NICC Doctors Hospital. And it's a privilege and a wonderful opportunity to join you today and uh, present to you what RA number 11930 is all about. Let me start by saying that I don't have any conflict of interest and the uh, sexual content of uh, this lecture is only for educational purposes. Uh, meaning, uh, 
yung mga sexual words or content that we will be using here uh, is not intended to cause any stimulation or harassment. Okay? And uh, we want to promote awareness as part of our objectives today, especially of the elements of online sexual abuse and exploitation in children by presenting the salient provisions of RA 11930. Napakahaba po nitong law na to, 45 provisions all in all. And it will take us siguro three hours going through all the provisions. So just allow us to provide the salient features and the salient provisions. And uh, encourage you as participants to read and uh, hopefully learn more about this law. Uh, this is a, a new law, by the way, so that you can help disseminate information to your friends, to your loved ones, and to others as well. And also to inspire the participants to consider taking up child protection as part of your advocacy in life. So what is RA number 11930? It is an act punishing OSAEC. Uh, ano yung OSAEC? Online Sexual Abuse of Exploitation of Children. Penalizing the production, distribution, possession, and access of CSAEM or Child Sexual Abuse or Exploitation Materials. This law also amended RA 9160, known as the Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2001. Later on, magtataka kayo, bakit may Anti-Money Laundering Act na involved dito? And repealing uh, RA 977, or the Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009, expanding this particular law. So, Section 1 of this uh, 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 law provides the short title. So this is the Anti-Online Sexual Abuse or Exploitation of Children or OSAEC and Anti-Child Sexual Abuse or Exploitation Materials Act. So, uh, sana po hindi natin makalimutan yung acronym no, ng OSAEC and then ng CSAM. No, so sige, practice tayo. Uh, para at least kahit ito yung matutunan natin today, Okay na tayo. So, O stands for, ano nga po yun? Okay, so online. All right. S stands for? Sexual. Dikit natin yung letter A doon. Abuse. And then yung E, or, yan, exploitation. And C stands for? Children. children. All right. So, OSAEC, again, online sexual abuse or exploitation of children. And when we say SISAEM, C stands for, again, Child, okay. Then S A E. Da alam na natin yan. Supposed to be sexual abuse or exploitation. And then the M. Importante po tong word na to. Stands for materials. Okay, materials. All right. So what is the Philippine policy on youth and children? Ito po kasi yung basis ng law na ito. So, under Section 2, the state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building. Yes, as a youth, kasama pa ba ako dyan? We are... Brown up. So, okay lang, no? Ang gumagana naman yung mic. So, we have uh, this vital role in the building of our nation. And our state recognizes... Uh, the importance of promoting and protecting the physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, emotional, psychological, and social well-being. In other words, yung holistic self ng bawat kabataan. So, uh, it, all, it is also a policy of the state to provide special protections to children. Sino pa ba ang magpo-protect sa children aside from the parents, no? aside from the guardians or the loved ones, but the state and the government then. From all forms of sexual violence, abuse, 
and exploitation, especially those in the context no, ng law na to, with the use of information and communications technology, uh, ICT. And also to provide sanctions uh, for their commission and to carry out programs of prevention, deterrence, and intervention in all situations of OSAIC in the digital and take note, non-digital production, distribution, or possession of SISAEM. So pag, uh, whenever you hear me use the, the, the acronyms, you know, I hope na clear sa atin, OSAEC, Online Sexual Abuse or Exploitation of Children and the Child Sexual Abuse or Exploitation Materials. Okay. So what are the unlawful and prohibited acts of RA 11930? Ito na po yung substance ng ating discussion today. This is the well for me the most important part. Okay, kasi ito yung dapat malaman natin as uh, individuals, no, and as uh, citizens of uh, this country, particularly uh, sa part na to ng law natin. So, under Section 4, sabi po dyan, regardless of the consent of the child, it shall be unlawful for any person to commit the following acts through online or offline means or a combination of both. You know, so, just allow me to uh, dissect uh, the parts of this uh, uh, provision. So, let's start with the words, regardless of the consent of the child. You know, so, sabi po dyan, Kahit daw, uh, meron seemingly, merong cons con consent, no? yung child. Ano ba ang consent? Uh, medyo madilim na, no? pero uh, okay lang kayo dyan. Uh, yan tayong konting sunlight. Uh, pwede ho ba akong mag-selfie? Uh, okay lang sa inyo? Okay lang po? Okay. Uh, selfie lang po ako, ano? Uh, sige. Just to document, and later on, uh, maybe show my my wife uh, where I was during this time. So, uh, kung meron mang mag-accuse sa akin of, uh, let's say, an online crime, no, I can just show this piece of documentary evidence na nandito ako with you today, and uh, I'm doing this lecture. Consent. So, kanina, I asked you, Kung pwede ba akong mag-selfie with you? And some of you expressed yes. Oh, narinig ko, merong mga nag-yes, nag-oo, nag-iyo, merong tumango ang ulo, merong tahimik lang. Dead ma lang. Siguro, kulang pa sa sugar, hindi kayo nag-breakfast, or medyo baka napuyat kayo kagabi, kaka-online ninyo. And so, those are forms of consent. No? So, pag yung bata daw, uh, uh, Tahimik lang, no? hindi, hindi, hindi nag-oo or hinag-hindi no? at uh, seemingly uh, pumayag or kahit hindi, no? wala ho yun. It, it is immaterial. No? So regardless of the consent of the child. So sino tong child na to? Tingnan yung katabi ninyo. Yan, mukha bang child? So under section 3, is part of the definition of terms, a child refers to a person below 18 years of age. Uh, yan. Okay, so mukha bang below 18? Kung hindi, baka nagpo-fall po siya sa other part of the definition no, of the, the word child. So tingnan natin. Sabi po uh, dito, a child refers to a person below 18 years of age. Okay. Or those over, meaning 19 and above. Uh, tingnan nyo ulit yung katabi nyo. Mukha bang 19 and above na? Yan. If the answer is yes, pasok po sila. Pasok po kayo sa definition ng child. So pag uwi nyo mamaya, pwede nyo sabihin, I'm still a child. No, I'm still a child uh, based on this law. Okay? But meron pong qualifier. Sabi dito, who are unable to fully take care of themselves or protect themselves. From what? Abuse, neglect. Uh, by the way, abuse is an active form. No, action po siya. Abuse, binubugbog, sinisigawan, pinapahiya. And neglect is the passive form. 
And may isa ako naalalang nursing board exam question that asked about the most common or the most, oh, not the most common, but the most, the, the worst abuse that the parent, a parent can do to his or her child. And that is neglect. Napabayaan mo daw. Napabayaan. That's part of abuse. Cruelty, exploitation, or discrimination because of what? Physical, mental, intellectual, sensory, or sensory disability or condition. Question, kasama po dyan ba, sir, doc, ang PWD? Well, we need to qualify if they are unable to fully take care of themselves or protect themselves from abuse or cruelty. So the answer is yes. No, so meaning they are dependent on another person, perhaps their parents or a guardian, uh, to protect themselves. So they would qualify for this. Okay. So kasama po ba dyan, sir, yung mga deaf, mga mute, and mga blind? Yes, those are sensory disabilities or conditions. Again, they should be qualified by this, unable to take care of themselves or protect themselves. So kung meron siyang, let's say, physical or mental defect, or mental condition, pero kaya mo kang kaya naman niyang i-protect yung sarili niya from abuse, etc., then that will not qualify as a child in this law. Okay? So, uh, the child shall also refer in addition to a person regardless of age. So, again, wala na naman tayo dun sa, sa years of age. No? But who is presented, depicted, or portrayed as a child. Example, as you look at me, uh, seemingly, I am an adult, no? But uh, kung mukha po akong uh, 17, no? or I'm being portrayed or depicted, let's say, sa video, no? as a 16, no? sweet 16-year-old doctor. No? So I could qualify as a child. Okay. Or a computer-generated, digitally or manually crafted images or graphics of a person who is represented or who is made to appear to be child. So, medyo inedit-edit po yung itsura ko. Nilagyan ako ng siguro may hawak ako na, ano, na, na bottle ng milk. No? Tapos may chipon ako dito and I was being depicted graphically as a child or perhaps a baby. <laughs> then I could qualify as a child in this law as well. Alright, so uh, sabi rito, it shall be unlawful for any person. Any person here pertains to the person sitting next to you. No, uh, yung person na yan is a natural person. Humihinga, nakakausap mo, gumagalaw, no? or a juridical person. Yan po yung corporation, yung institution, like the school, for example, a uh, company. No? So, hindi nyo naman siguro nakakausap yung corporation o no? yung company. No? But they're considered as a person in the eyes of this law. So, any person, whether natural or juridical, may commit okay, an online or offline or a combination of both through the following act. So take note, hindi lang po to online. Though ang title natin kanina is about online. No? Kasi bago yan maging online, offline muna yan. Like for example, when you recorded someone, no? so offline muna yan, no? and then pinost mo ngayon online, so it became now an online no? na, na, na material. So it could be a combination or uh, either one of these. So ano-ano po itong mga act Na to. So allow me to go through and explain, especially po yung mga technical mga na terms that you will encounter throughout this uh, law. No? So first, to hire, employ, use, persuade, induce, extort. No? So siguro sa ex explanatory, iba dyan, pa, except siguro yung word na extort. No? So yung extort, ito po yung pipilitin mo yung isang tao na meron kang blackmail effect. No, isabihin na, sige, bigyan mo akong pera. Kung hindi, ipapublish ko to o ipapost ko to sa Facebook or sa YouTube kung saan makikita ng napaka maraming followers ko or followers mo. So, that is an extortion. No? So, may kapalit. Or coerce, pilitin. No? Pilitin. A child, alam na natin yung child, to perform or participate in whatever way. Take note, perform. No, siya yung mismong kasali dun sa act na yun, or extra lang siya. Participating in whatever way in the creation or in the production of any form of the abuse, exploitation, or with the materials. 
Okay? So, I hope clear po sa atin itong part na to. So, ano yung osaic? No? And uh, perhaps the, the, the gist no? and the most important part of, of this uh, uh, lecture, osaic refers to the use of ICT. Uh, ICT as a means to abuse and or exploit children sexually, which includes cases in which offline child abuse and or exploitation is combined with an online component. So, tingnan natin. Ano ba yung sexual abuse dito? Uh, para may idea tayo. Ano bang sexual abuse? Pag sinabing sexual abuse under the law, under this law, uh, refers to a child uh, being used for any act or activity inducing sexual stimulation. No, inducing, ibig sabihin uh, ini-induce ka pa lang no? pini-prepare ka pa lang no? towards uh, sexual stimulation so there's no act of sexual intercourse yet in abuse no? second, for the purpose of sexual gratification no? so uh, siguro tumataas yung blood pressure no? nagli-release ng hormones and then I excite yung, yung person no, na nagko-consume nung material, for example, in pursuit of the desire to have carnal knowledge of the child, regardless of the gender, so babae or lalaki or okay, gender, of the perpetrator or the victims. Okay, so daw babae or lalaki yung victim or yung perpetrator, hindi importante yun. Again, the consent of the victim is not important. So, papaano? In any form of communication. A communication can be through any platform or any format or an actual physical interaction. So, parang ganito, face-to-face. -face. No? So, physical interaction between a child and, again, any person. So, again, pag sinabi po sexual abuse, take note, wala pa pong sexual intercourse na nangyayari. So, it's a prelude usually to the exploitation. Okay? Kaya siya magkahiwalay. Kaya siya sexual abuse or exploitation. Bakit? Kasi pwedeng tumigil dyan lang. Pwedeng hanggang dyan lang siya. Okay? Or pwede pa siyang mag-extend to the, to the exploitation. Okay. So, alam na po natin ano yung sexual abuse dito. Next uh, term dito is the ICT. So, siguro familiar tayo dito. ICT is uh, Information Communications Technology, which is the totality of electronic means. So, kung pinaka best example natin would be our cell phones. Uh, lahat naman tayo siguro dito may cell phone. Yung iba baka dalawa pa. No? So, uh, it's used to access information, di ba? Uh, you can use that pag may tanong si teacher. Uh, I-Google natin, no? pag hindi natin alam yung sagot. You create something out of that. Uh, paano yon? Siguro nakaka-compose kayo dyan ng lyrics or ng, ng uh, notes or whatever. Or you collect information, no? store them, process, receive. No? Nag-text ka, nag-send ka, na-receive mo, nag-transmit ka. Present, nag-present ka using your phone. No? Uh, tara, ano? Um, free ka ba? May... May kikwento ako sa'yo. No? Sa pyramid to. So, sa alika rito. Present something and disseminate information. So, lahat po yan involves information and communication technology. Okay. Now, again, take note, hiwalay po ang sexual abuse at saka po ang sexual exploitation. No? So, punta tayo sa sexual exploitation naman. A child sexual exploitation refers to any Okay. Kahit ano daw po dito sa mga acts na to. Number one, child sexual abuse. So again, ito po, ah, yung child sexual abuse is a component of sexual exploitation. So it, it could be a part and parcel of the whole sexual exploitation. Sabi natin kanina, it is usually a prelude, pasimula, papunta doon sa exploitation. Okay? So, child sexual abuse, okay, yung mga enumerate natin kanina, no? sexual gratification, okay, uh, yun. And with consideration, ano tong consideration na to? So, when we say consideration, wala pala, no? hindi pala nag appear <laughs> So, with consideration, it could be money, monetary. So, cash, pera, or non-monetary. So, limbawa, ne, alika rito, may lollipop ako, Bigyan kita ng candy, chocolate, lollipop, gawin mo to. Okay? Remove your clothes. Something to that effect. Okay? So, with consideration. Or, favor. Uh, sige, ako nagagastos dun sa, 
sa tatay mo na naka-confine sa ospital. Ako na magbabayad ng hospital bills niya. Okay, favor. And then benefit. Sige, ako na magbabayad ng tuition fee mo. Ako na bahala. Uh, ano gusto mo? Samahan natin ng kotse. So, uh, di ba? Uh, samahan natin ng jewelries. With consideration. So the consideration is used as an exchange. For what? For the opportunity to perform those abusive and the exploitative act. Which brings us to the second act, which is the actual sexual intercourse. Ayun na. No, meron na pong contact. Sexual contact. Kasi pwedeng eye contact lang, no? Pwedeng contact lang natin siya sa phone. With a child or children, or with or without consideration. So sir, pwede bang maramihan yung victim? Yes. Okay, pag maraming offenders, sindikato. Syndicate. No? So, third, employing fraud. No? Pag sinabing fraud, panloloko, machination, strategy, or plano, style. Paano natin to gagawin? Undue influence. For example, professor, may undue influence dun sa student. Kasi hawak niya yung grade, nakasalalay sa kanya yung pagkakapasa niya sa, sa subject na yun. That's an undue influence. Or kamag-anak, older relative, or sibling. Intimidation. Pag sinabing intimidation versus threat, tandaan po natin ang threat direct dun sa victim. Okay, papatayin kita. Bubugbugin kita. Direct threat. Pag intimidation, papatayin ko yung kamag-anak mo o yung pusa mo o kaya yung mahal mo sa buhay. So that's an, that's an intimidation. Indirect threat siya, technically. Or deception. Lulukohin ka. Hindi, ano lang to. Uh, akin lang to. Personal lang. Sa, sa akin lang to. Tsaka sa'yo. Gusto mo. Kung gusto mo. Tara, record natin. Okay? And then yung pala, you are deceived ipapublish pala siya. By any person to what? To commit sexual abuse, hiwalay, or sexual intercourse. And then number four, any other similar or analogous act. Ang tawag po natin dito, the catch-all phrase. Panigurado. Kasi baka biglang may hindi mag-fall dito sa mga items na to, then dito natin ipapasok. As long as kamukha niya. No? Analogous. Related to the child abuse, cruelty, or exploitation, which is prejudicial to the development of the child. All right. So, alam na natin yung difference ng sexual abuse and exploitation, and this is done usually offline or online or a combination of both. Now, this sexual abuse or exploitation of children may also include one the possession of the material. Si Saem. Kasi iba po yung act or iba yung recording. Iba yung, yung picture, yung photograph. Iba po yun. Okay? Kasi pag walang, walang record, sa minds lang natin yun, nakastore. Pero pag may recording, ah, pwede natin i-distribute, pwede natin i-share, pwede natin paramihin, multiply, at paabutin hanggang sa ibang bansa. Siguro, wag muna sa Turkey. Uh, they suffered a great damage no, and the loss of people from the earthquake. So let's remember them in our prayers. Now, this material refers to any representation, whether offline or through the use of ICT, Okay, by means of video, visual, audio, written, I'm sure uh, alam nyo po ito, I will not explain more on this. Uh, any combination of this electronic, mechanical, digital, optical, magnetic, or other means. Ano bang IT dito? Gamit ng mga magnetic uh, means. Of a child engaged or involved. Uh, engaged or involved in real or simulated sexual activities. So, pwedeng totoo talaga, actual, or simulated lang. Kunya-kunyarian lang. So, but it is being portrayed as real. Like in the movies. 
Nasa na movies, portray nila that they are having sexual intercourse. But in reality, wala naman. No? But yung mga angulations, no? yung mga effects, even yung sound, mukhang may nangyayari sa kanila. That's a simulation. Of what? Of sexual activities. Now, pangatlo na to. Sexual abuse, sexual exploitation, and now, sexual activities. Yeah, parang pare-parehas lang naman yata yung mga terms na to. Ha? Yes, kaya nga kinaklarify ng law kung ano naman this time yung sexual activity. Under this, ito daw yung mga acts whether performed or simulated which include sexual intercourse, no? yung actual or a lascivious act including contact involving the genitalia, oral stimulation of the genitals or oral stimulation of the anus, whether between persons of the same sex or opposite sex. So usually po, pag merong anus, no, yung butthole, no, yan, kasama po yan dyan. Same sex or it could be opposite sex. No. So, sir, ano naman yung lascivious act? So the word lascivious means an internal desire, sensual desire. No. So sa Tagalog, yung word starts with the letter L din. No. Lascivious, parang English L, lascivious, sa Tagalog L. No. Libido. <laughs> English pa rin yun, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, ang katanog nun, no? L-I-B-O-G uh, Yung mga manginginom, alam siguro to no? Ade, Bilog yun eh, bilog Okay, ito L-I-B-O-G uh, so, Yun po yung lasciviousness Okay, second would be masturbation uh, Sorry, I cannot demonstrate this uh, Imagine nyo na lang po uh, So, self- stimulation or well pwede rin dalawang tao yan involved dyan sadistic or masochistic abuse sadistic siya yung nagigain ng pleasure kapag sinasaktan niya yung other person ah, nag-enjoy siya doon sadista yung masochist siya naman yung sinasaktan yeah, siya yung naka-handcuff ganun siya yung nilalatigo ganun naka-blind no, doon siya nag enjoy So, uh, kasama po yan dyan. Sexual activity po yan. Four, lascivious exhibition. So, ito, kanina act. Ito, pakita lang. Uh, so, exhibition of genitals, buttocks, breast, pubic area, and anus. Ay, naku, ang dami po nito sa Facebook. Kaya nga, sobrang ingat ko kasi yung mga anak ko, they would love scanning through my photos. Kasi I usually, with the consent of my patients during surgery, I would take pictures of the specimen okay, na tinatanggal ko. Or yung condition, ba? ano siya, trauma, uh, may mga internal injury. So I would ask the consent before I do the surgery sa patient, can I take a picture of uh, what I will see no, during the operation so I can share it to perhaps your husband or someone, a relative nyo. And so I, we can both decide on the best option, treatment that we can do. So I would take the picture. So marami po ako naka-store na pictures sa phone ko. And so my children would love to look at them. Kaso minsan, syempre, may, may ano doon, may, may mga Facebook doon na naka-open, no? So uh, mga, mga YouTube na naka-open. At kung si-scroll nila yon, may kita nila yung mga reels doon, mga TikTok doon, nung mga... Kung sino-sino exhibiting their genitals, their buttocks, their breasts, their pubic area, no, or anus, that's part of sexual activity. No, sabi nila yung mga, mga bold star daw, no, actress or actor, bold star, meron daw yung complex of, uh, well, wanting to be voyeured voyeurism no? so kung ikaw yung naninilip ikaw yung tumitingin dun sa mga mga playboy magazine <laughs> lana yon obsolete na yung playboy no FHM ay wala na rin yon luma na rin yon ano bang bago ngayon guys lana no online na lahat eh 
Yeah, andyan na lahat. So those are part of Lascivious Exhibition. Bestiality! Ay, nako, ano tong bestiality? From the word best. <laughs> Beauty and the best. Debe. <laughs> Hindi po yan best friend. No? Bestiality means beast. Beast ravaging. No? So, this is sexual intercourse simply with animals. With horse, for example, or dogs, or cats, or rats. Sana hindi butiki, no? or ipis. No? Hirap yata, imagine yun. Bestiality. Use of any object or instrument for lascivious acts. Object. Bahala na kayo dyan. Uh, I'm sure your imagination would is wild as mine. So, whatever. Pwedeng walis ting-ting, o yung walis tambo, yung handle nun, batuta, whatever. Talong. Those are objects. Instruments. Gitara, drums. Cymbals. Eh, eh, instrument kasi or any analogous circumstance. Analogous na naman. Ito na naman si analogous. Pag nakakita tayo ng analogous, sa catch-all phrase, pag hindi nakasama dyan, example, paano sir yung sex with, with dead people? Corpse. Yeah, pwede ba yun sir? Yes, kasama yun dyan. Necrophilia. Yung mga tao na nakakagain ng pleasure out of uh, sexual intercourse with dead people. So usually, mag apply yan sa mga puneraria embalsamador mga ganun that's an analogous circumstance okay o, wala pa dyan guys yung felasyo mga ganun no? oral sex wala pa dyan no? alright so uh, this includes materials again materials to no? materials focus that's focus on the genitalia or the other private parts of a, again, child. Alam na natin yung child. And this is interchangeable with uh, the word uh, sisaem. Okay. I mean, sorry. Interchangeable with sisam. Tanggalin mo lang yung i. No? Kasama pa rin yun. Okay? Kasi pwede kasing abuse lang. Again, hiwalay ang abuse, sexual abuse, sa exploitation. So this can include also production, dissemination, and possession. Okay, mamaya. Check natin yung mga phones ninyo. Hindi, <laughs> hindi naman. Uh, may data privacy naman tayo. No? So, you are entitled to your privacy. So, hindi pwede yun. Bawal yun. No? Uh, bawal, hinarang ka ng polis. Uh, amin na yung phone mo. Tingnan natin yung mga phone mo. Baka you are in possession of this sexual abuse or exploitative materials. Ayan. Papasok po yan dyan. Okay? So, ingat-ingat tayo. Or, better... Huwag na nating involve yung sarili natin dyan sa mga ganyang mga bagay. Another point, okay, which is very, very critical. No? Uh, from here on, after nito, medyo bibilisan ko na kasi natapos na natin yung hill, naakyat na natin. Allow me to talk more on this term, online grooming. Okay? Hindi po to grooming ng chihuahua or ng ang aso ninyo. Yung makapal, yung ano, yung, yung buhok. Grooming of children for sexual purposes. Ano po tong grooming na to? So, let's look at the this term. Sabi sa law, it was defined as a predatory conduct. Na predator. Ah, parang ano, na, parang alien predator. Ah, talagang sisirain. Okay? To the point na ah, sasaktan at even taking something no? or perhaps even to the point of the life of a person. So, it's a conduct or an act or pattern of acts. Okay? Pattern. Okay? Take note, meron tong series or pattern of acts. Of what? Ganito po yan. Establishing a relationship of trust or emotional connection. Oh, so, ay... Miss or sir, pwede ba kitang makilala? Pwede bang makipagkaibigan sa'yo? Or biglang ano yan, uh, gagawa ng mga situation where magkakakilala kayo. Uh, I remember one time, I was in a bar. Uh, and uh, I was uh, waiting for a friend. 
male friend. And then I was approached in the ta- on the table no, sa, uh, by a, a, a young, pretty, sexy lady. Uh, sabi niya, Hi, uh, may nakaupo ba dito? Tingnan ko, mukhang wala naman. No? So, uh, wala naman. Uh, why? Uh, pwede bang makit table? Oh, sure. Makit uh, table lang naman pala eh. Sabi niya, can I offer to buy you a drink? Uh, in English ko lang para medyo social pero Tagalog po yung usapan namin. Okay, so ano bang mga drinks dito? Wala akong alam eh. Ang alam ko lang noon time na yung screwdriver. Ah, uh, screwdriver. Okay, sige. So bili siya ng screwdriver. Uh, Shinare niya sa akin, binili siya ng sarili niya. So uh, inuman kami, kwentuhan kami. Uh, after several hours, tipa dumadating yung kaibigan ko. Maya maya parang nahihilo na ako, parang natok na ako, ah. parang, parang gusto ko nang matulog. Parang nagbe-blur na yung vision ko at nagsasara na yung mga, mga wonderful eyes ko. So, in short, nakatulog ako. Paggising ko, I was in a room, uh, a motel, uh, without my clothes on. And then sabi ko, sana na-rape ako. Pero hindi po ako na-rape. Nanakawan po ako ng mga damit ko, ng, mga, ng wallet ko, tsaka ng watch ko na fake Rolex. So sabi ko, sayang, no? sana na, na-rape na lang ako. So initially, they will establish trust. They will establish a, a connection with you kakaibiganin ka, ah, lalabas-labas kayo, wholesome. Okay? Minsan tutulungan ka, they will do favor sa'yo. So usually, yun po ang start ng grooming. I'm sharing this sana para at least may lagi tayong red flag na nakaabang. Anytime may ma-encounter tayo na mga ganitong situations. Kasi we'll never know. So, ingat po tayo sa grooming. Diyan po nagsisimula yan. It could be directly sa victim or it could be through the family. I remember a, a case decided by the Supreme Court where I think it was even a lawyer, if I remember it correctly, befriending the family. No, initially helping them out sa mga mga ano nila uh, business transactions no yung pagfa-file no and then yung may mga cases sila uh, tinutulungan no and then eventually yun pala pinupunterya yung daughter nung kanyang client na father and eventually bata pa yung daughter nagano sila Hong Kong no, at seemingly took advantage of their connection, their relationship. Uh, so, guys, ingat po tayo dito. Okay? Grooming. So, take note of that word. Okay? Kahit ito na lang matutunan nyo ngayong araw na to, okay na ako. So, actually, pwede nga tayong umuwi eh. Brown out naman, di ba? Kaso hindi pa po. Meron pa po. Marami pa po tayong matututunan as we go through Okay, but please don't forget this term, this word. It may involve caregivers. Okay, or your friend. Oh, yun muna ang direct ano muna, kakaibiganin niya yung friend ng friend. Oh, yung friend mo muna. So whether in person, in person, okay, or via electronic or other similar devices. Uh, apps, date apps or for example, uy, kunyari na ano lang na misend lang sa iyo. O kaya sa Messenger, no? Ay, ay sorry, ano, akala ko ikaw yung friend ko or akala ko ikaw yung kaklasiko nung nung preschool pa o saka nursery pa. Ngayon pala ini-stock ka na, pinag-aaralan ka na, tinitingnan na yung profile mo, yung mga friends mo and all. Grooming. And take note, anong purpose? perpetrating the sexual abuse or the exploitation 
or the production of any form of sisain. So, pwedeng mag-end up na maging kayo, kayo na, and then mag-move on yung relationship ninyo, maging intimate, maging sensual, sexual. And then dahil nga kayo na, okay na mag-record. Okay na mag-take ng photographs. Wala na sa'yo yun eh. Kasi nga kayo na. He or she may even discuss about marriage just to lure you. That's another word, no? That's another term later we'll discuss. Or just to trick you. Guys, kung ikaw yung guy, sana hindi tayo yung offender. Kasi usually, offender nito, lalaki or foreigner, as we will learn later on. At kung ikaw yung lady, ingat po tayo. By the way, pwede rin itong mangyari sa guy. So, ingat din tayo, guys. Okay? I was a victim of this. So, I was a gullible person during that time. I'm a naive person during that time. Uh, but after that, it taught me a real and a, a, an important lesson in life. No? To be careful and to, be, to watch out for these kinds of predators. Ah, tingnan yung katabi ninyo. Sige na, ngayon na. Tingnan nyo. Okay. Mukhang hindi naman predator. No? Uh, uh, so sana, no? Sana. Ah, yung mga nasa online po, okay pa kayo dyan. I hope uh, baka wala na, no? baka na-cut off na tayo kasi na-censored na tayo rito. Alright, so online grooming, extortion, explain na natin yan. Sharing, sharing image. Uh, paano ba to Sharing, uh, yun lang, pasa-pasa. No? Sharing. Oh, sige, share ko to oh, Image-based sexual abuse. Or simula, papadalhan ka ng mga, ano, mga pictures ng abs muna, mga ganon. No? Or cleavage muna. Yan, mga ganyan. Or ipin muna, ganon. Or lips muna, ganyan. Or tenga na merong hikaw, mga ganon. Or pusod, no? Na may hikaw din minsan. So, share ng mga ganon image. Just to arouse you or just to... Well, that's abuse na yun. Papunta na ng abuse yun. So, ingat na tayo. Mga red flags po yan. Commercial, ay nako, pinagkakitaan na. No? Naging hanap buhay na siya. Um, exploitation through online prostitution. Ano, binugaw na. Bugaw. Ano yung bugaw? Yung minsan sa langaw, no? Pero minsan sa mga babae din yan nangyayari. Uh, mga magulang, pinoprostitute yung kanilang mga anak. Uh, binibenta. In other words, live streaming. Uh, anong difference ng streaming, guys? Tsaka ng live streaming? Anong difference nun? Uh, yung streaming, naka-record. Anytime you can play it. No? Pag live streaming, may ilaw, red, then nakalagay live. No? So yung mga TikTok na earlier na record, yun na yun. Mga streaming na lang yun. No? Pero pag live actual, wow. Real time. As it happens. Okay? Streaming. Alright, then you have your online child sexual exploitation abuse, OXEA, interchangeable yan with OXAM or OSAEC. Okay, second is to produce this. Gagawa ka na ng material. Uh, medyo may pagka-director ka. No? Ang galing mo mag-angulate ng mga bagay-bagay. Manufacture, facilitate, or create any form of material. Okay, whether photograph yan, video, any form of recording. No? And then, uh, you participate extra ka doon, kasali ka doon, and then you manufacture and you create the same. Kasama po yan sa pinapanish. What else? Offer, distribute, advertise, promote, export. No? Malaking, ano to, malaking uh, business po ito. Uh, malaking pera. Knowingly publish, transmit, or broadcast by any means. Permit and influence the child to engage, participate, or assist. Okay? Uh, then, facilitate. No, ibig sabihin, ano ka lang, facilitator ka lang. No, sige, ikaw mag-upload. Ayun. 
Uh, ikaw nag-upload, wala ka namang kinalaman, di ka nag-record, di ka bida doon sa, sa play, no? doon sa uh, sexual act, eh, ikaw yung nag-upload. Okay? Ginamit yung, ano mo, yung gadget mo or yung uh, account mo to upload. You are a facilitator. Now, ano pa? Stream or live stream? To recruit? Alaga, sama kayo. Okay? Join kayo. Transport? Driver ka? Tagadala ka lang? Transfer, harbor, provide or receive a child. Uh, Sa yun nakatira, yung child na ina-abuse. Okay? Again, you cannot use the defense. Ay, may consent naman. Okay? Introduce or match a child to a foreign national. Ah, ano ka tawag sa'yo? Bridge. Yeah, bridge over two places. Now, matchmaker. With a foreign national. Take note, hindi lang yun. Ha? Kailangan it should be qualified by the purpose or with the purpose of committing any of those offenses in the act. Kasama po yun. So, pag ano ka lang, pinakilala mo lang yung, ano, yung Indian at saka yung Filipina, okay, tas naging sila, um, alamang, hindi ka, di ka liable dyan. Okay? But, if the purpose is to commit any of those offenses, then that qualifies for OSAIC. Alright, film distributors, theaters, okay, uh, this punishes yung mga uh, film distributors, mga big-time companies. Uh, again, hindi lang to natural person, it includes juridical persons. Okay? So, anong meron? Penalty. So, pag nahuli, okay, anong parusa? Simple lang, life imprisonment. Okay? And, a fine, kasama po ha, and, hindi po to or, hindi ka mamimili, kasama, and a fine of what? Lot less than 2 million pesos. O, malaki yung fine. Okay? Malaki yung, uh, matindi yung penalty. Okay? Which is, fair naman siguro, no? Kasi, yung ginawa mong act becomes social, becomes public, sinira mo yung buhay ng tao socially, no? yung trauma sa kanya, yung self-esteem niya, yung confidence niya, um, yun for the damages done to that child now if you've just benefited for whatever reason no, financial or otherwise no, pwedeng hindi kasi pera yung benefit pwedeng favor no? so if you benefited in the commission of any of those acts that's also punishable uh, nag provide ka ng venue then ano yung then? Gar, then. Hindi. It would be a, a then, no? but a place in the house, in the home, na pwedeng private, no? pwedeng yung sala, ganun, or mga kwarto, CR, okay? cubicles, cinemas, houses, private homes, or other establishments, whatever establishment it is. Okay? That's providing venue. Ikaw yung may-ari. O, ah, sige, dito natin i-record sa bahay nyo. O, sige, or hindi mo alam, sige, wala kang idea, may ano lang ha, may record lang kami ha, pahiram muna ha. Okay. Reclusion temporal. Mga, hmm, uh, years ba yan? Mga 30? 12 years? 20 years? Okay. And a fine not, or between 1 million and 2 million pesos. Luring. No? Luring, ano ba yung luring? Luring is an act. Okay, ano difference ng grooming? Yung grooming could be online or offline. Luring by means of a computer system. Messenger. Computer. Okay? Luring. Ilulure ka. For what? For the purpose of facilitating the commission of the sexual activity or production or of any form of sisaem. So usually po ang luring, kasama niya ang grooming. Magkasama yun. No? So parang nag-fish ka dyan. Fishing. Luring or nagpapain. Okay? Ah, mga meat, gano'n. No? Oh, mga rats. Nilulure out niyo yung rats para lumabas sila to be able to identify them. Or to sexualize. Ano yung to sexualize? Children. That is to use a child as an object of sexual desire or satisfaction of another. Take note, even there is no actual sexual intercourse or no private parts of the body, wholesome, nakadamit, mukha lang, walang hubad, no? walang actual uh, intercourse that is considered sexualization. 
And that is penalized by this law as well. Engage in pandering. Ay, naku, malalim tong word na to. Oh, lalo pa, nag-iisip ka ng mabuti, nag-reflect ka on something, di ba? Ay, sorry ah. Medyo high level kasi minsan yung mga jokes ko. Uh, if you not laugh at my jokes, it's okay. Oh, kasi high level yung mga jokes ko and uh, I get this all the time. Oh, hala seryoso ako. No? Nag, yung pala, nag-joke na. Uh, no. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Pandering. So, pandering is an act of offering, advertising, uh, promoting, representing, or distributing any means. Okay? So, in other words, you are distributing, you are promoting, you are advertising, okay? Those materials okay, that contains sexual abuse, exploitation, and or regardless of the actual content. So, tawag po dyan, pandering. Okay? Uh, from the word pan, sige, para may ano tayo, para maalala natin tong word na to. From the word pan, P-A-N, di ba? Pandemic, for example, uh, worldwide, no? So, ibig sabihin, massive na, kalat na. Okay? So, that's uh, the, the act of uh, making this worldwide, uh, in a sense, no? open to the public or to other people. Okay? Tandaan natin, nung pandemic, tumaas yung incidence ng online sex abuse, sexual abuse and exploitation. Bakit? Lahat naka-online. Okay? Alright. So, if you willfully subscribe, nag-donate ka, nag-join ka, subscribe lang ha, like lang. Ingat kayo sa mga kiniklik niyong mga subscription or mga like na mga pages or mga sites. Pwede pong magamit yan uh, as an evidence that you willfully subscribed, joined, or participated, or donated. Lalo na pag mayroong mga cash involved. Kaya may anti-money laundering act na involved dito. Kasi dyan pa dadaanin money transfer, yung bayad, yung consideration. And they will play a part no, sa pagsugpo at sa paghuli at sa pagprevent nitong uh, cases na to. Okay? Advertise, print, okay? using brochures. Ah, grabe na to, no? Brochures na, magazines na, no? Parang uh, high level na talaga to. Okay? Or, ito, ito, ingat kayo dito kasi you might be caught having in your, on your possession what? Three or more materials of sexual abuse and exploitation. Why? It's a prima facie evidence. Meaning, upfront evidence. Uh, on site parang do rebatable siya no kailangan i-prove pa rin siya later on but on site ayun pag meron kang tatlo niyan it's as if you are intending to sell this or you are wanting to distribute or publish or broadcast this parang res ipsa locutor the thing speaks for itself andiyan na yan na huli ka na on the act so it's as if you will do this you're intending to sell distribute etc so ingat three materials in your possession sa phones nyo, sa gadgets nyo okay reclusion temporal okay, ang punishment penalty, 12 to 20 years of imprisonment and uh, second to the last patapos na po ako, willfully access ah, matindi po ito perhaps for me dito magkakaroon ng maraming cases later on sa Supreme Court, aabot sa Supreme Court, willfully accessing, access, no? Nag-access ka, pumasok ka dun sa site, willfully. Well, ang presumption is, alam mo yung ginagawa mo. It's not by accident, it's not by chance. So, willful, sinadya mo. Why? Human nature. So, you cannot use the defense curiosity lang po. Na-curious lang po ako kung anong meron dyan. So, ingat po tayo talaga. Ah, the better uh, way, the better response to this, share this to others. Ah, i-share nyo to. So, prison mayor, 6 years to 12 years. 6 years one day to 12 years. And a fine of thousands or to conspire conspiracy 
Okay? So lahat po ito, again, uh, as I close, the effect of the consent of the victim is untenable, meaning unjustifiable. You cannot use it as a defense sa court. So pag sabihin mo, uh, hindi, pumayag naman siya. Ito nga, pumirma pa nga. Ah, no. It is immaterial. It's irrelevant. Okay? So, good Samaritan rule as I uh, start to finish. Ito po yung protection na binibigay to those who will report or those who are uh, who has the responsibility to report. Yung may mga internet uh, kiosk, no? yung may mga internet cafe, o yung mga providers kayo. No? Uh, yan. So, you have the responsibility of reporting or any one of us which is uh, should have this responsibility, there's a protection given. Now, if you provide information for the purpose of investigation or prosecution of a case, you, me, all of us will not be civilly, civilly, criminally, or administratively liable kung ikaw ay nasa government, for example. Okay? So, this is called the Good Samaritan Protection. Okay? So, kung magsusumbong ka, the law will protect you. Papasok din dyan po yung mga provisions on witness protection program, uh, and then yung protection na binibigay ng government and state for those uh, primary witness. As long as they are done in good faith, meaning honesty, wala kang gustong kapalit, no? wala kang uh, gustong siraan, okay? necessary to prevent access or dissemination, important yun para matigil to, and you have reported this within 24 hours after the act or the discovery of the act. Paano kung lumagpas ng 24? Then, we'll see. No? Diyan lalabas siguro later on yung mga, mga arguments uh, sa court. So, what is the safe harbor rule? This is another protection now. This is different from Good Samaritan because uh, this is for those who have an access or possession or any recording of those materials. But as long as your purpose is to comply with the duties of this act, meaning you want to report it. Uh, you want to to, uh, 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 to to inform the government agencies, the police, no, yung uh, court, no, yung prosecutor, magsumbong, no, legitimate investigation, or alba, nasa kapulisan ka, no, criminology student ka, or uh, intern ka doon. No, it's a legitimate investigation. Gusto, or kahit ano ka, private person ka, you just want to investigate further kung totoong may sexual abuse or exploitation. Or, uh, you are part of the criminal justice system. You're a lawyer, for example, or a prosecutor. And then, legitimate policy scholarly or like this, academic no, na purpose, kagaya ng ginagawa natin ngayon, this is for academic purposes, then we are exempted. We are protected. Okay? Uh, and we will not be subject to any civil, criminal, or administrative liability. Though, take note, again, my qualifier, ethical clearance is required. Okay? So, uh, I, I think I will end with, with this slide which says, the child abuse is a heinous and personally damaging crime. Yes, it is. It is therefore incumbent on the church if you consider yourself as part of the church meaning the community, the body of Christ. Though it's not the structure itself, but you are a part of that community, then we belong to the church, the universal church of God. Therefore, treating such matters with the utmost seriousness. So I'd like to pass on the mic to the second reporter. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Doc Steve. Um, maray na aga sa tuyang gabos. Garumayo ng energy. Sarap pa. Maray na aga sa tuyang gabos. Okay, pakita gabos. Or info overload na. 
Carry pa? Okay pa? Okay pa? Yes. Sige daw. Um, uh, maano lang kita. Quick lang na pampa-energy. Mapakuraw ako. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Okay? Sige daw. One, two, three. Saru pa, tagaro, the iman enthusiast, enthusiastic si pakadangog ko. Saru pa. One, two, three, let's go. Okay, thank you so much, guys. So, um, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go to the second part of this lecture regarding, um, Republic Act number 11930 or the anti-online sexual abuse or exploitation of children and anti-child sexual abuse or exploitation materials act. So, basically, um, yung mga importanteng uh, provision or yung mga importanteng definition na kailangan nating malaman, lahat naman yon na-cover na ni Doc Steve. Uh, so, ngayon, medyo magiging technical naman tayo. So, um, tatalakayin natin ngayon kung ano-ano uh, yung mga institutions or agencies. Lahat ba nakakaintindi naman ng Tagalog, no? Oh, okay. So, kung ano-ano yung mga hensya na um, nagpe-play ng vital role uh, uh, dito sa batas na to, kung saan pwedeng uh, kasuhan yung mga lumabag sa batas, uh, kung ano-ano yung mga karapatan ng kabataan ng mga batang biktima, um, kung paano nagsisimula yung mga investigasyon na ginagawa ng mga, ng mga law enforcement agencies at kung sino-sino ba yung pwedeng mag-file ng complaints um, laban sa mga taong lumabag ng batas na ito. So, under Section 12 of this um, law, um, an alien offender um, is uh, is someone who is a foreigner or a a person who is not a Filipino citizen. Um, so what happens to a uh, foreign foreign offender? First, he shall be criminally prosecuted immediately. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Um, siya ay agad-agad nakakasuhan kapag nalaman na siya ay lumabag or kapag kapag gumawa siya ng anything na nandun, na napapaloob doon sa mga unlawful or prohibited acts na tinalakay kanina ni Doc Steve. Pangalawa, he shall be deported after serving sentence. So, papaalisin siya sa Pilipinas. Uh, at pangatlo, he will be permanently barred from re-entering the Philippines. Uh, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya pwedeng makapasok ulit sa Pilipinas dahil nga, um, Dahil nga sa paglabag niya sa batas na to. So, quick overview lang kung paano nangyayari or ano yung dynamics ng uh, online sexual abuse and exploitation cases. So, again, ano nga ulit ang uh, online sexual abuse uh, and exploitation? Uh, so, ang online sexual abuse and exploitation, uh, usually, nag involve yan or um, uh, nag pumapalibot siya sa tatlong mga uh, karakter. So, una, yung facilitator. Pangalawa, yung seller or yung biktima. Yung kung sino yung um, napapaloob dun sa mga materials, kung sino yung gumagawa ng mga um, ng mga acts na um, makakapag-stimulate sa, 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 sa buyer or sa offender at pangatlo yung buyer nga or or yung mga um, kumukuha ng serbisyo nitong mga biktimang uh, or seller. So lahat ng to gaya ng uh, sinabi ni Doc Steve kanina, lahat ng, ng to may kapalit, usually for money. Uh, siguro dahil sa malamang dahil dahil to sa kahirapan ng buhay. Um, so madalas na bibiktima talaga ang ating mga kabataan uh, dahil dito. Um, so most of the buyers or traffickers or yung mga 
um, nag avail ng mga services ng mga victims natin, usually sila ay mga foreigners. So, uh, sa actual cases, karami, karamihan sa kanila, yung mga nakabisita na sa Pilipinas, mga turista, yung iba naman, mga boyfriends, partners ng mga Pilipina rin na nandito sa Pilipinas or nasa ibang bansa rin. Um, so, ganun, ganun yung mga nangyayari na kaso. Uh, anong mangyayari uh, kapag um, anong mangyayari sa mga foreigner or sa mga uh, taga-ibang lugar, taga-ibang bansa na naglabag dito sa bat- lumabag sa batas na to? Um, so, in coordination with the, Bureau, uh, with the Department of Foreign Affairs or the DFA, um, the Bureau of Immigration and the DOJ or the Department of Justice shall ensure that all convicted offenders, yung mga naparosahan, yung mga nasentensyahan, um, ay mare-report. So, um, and... Um, hindi na sila pwedeng papasukin sa Pilipinas. Ang National Coordination uh, Center na mamaya-maya mas tatalakayin pa natin ay magkikreate or gagawa and magme-maintain ng isang updated registry of blacklisted aliens based sa impormasyon na galing din sa DF, sa tatlong ahensyang ito, DFA, Bureau of Immigration, at ang DO, uh, DOJ. Punta naman tayo sa kung sino yung may kapangyarihan who exercises jurisdiction over the acts na na-discuss kanina na pinaparusahan dito sa batas na to. Um, under Section 14 of the law, the state exercises jurisdiction over any act um, defined and penalized under this um, act. So, the state, ibig sabihin, ang Pilipinas. So, sino ang magpaparusa? Yung mga korte na nandito sa Pilipinas. Um, sunod naman, where were the acts committed? Saan ba nangyari? Saan Saan, saan, saan nangyari yung mga pinagbabawal, yung mga ipaglabag ng batas na to? Um, the law provides that the acts may be committed within or outside the Philippines. So, ibig sabihin, posibleng nangyari siya dito sa Pilipinas, posibleng sa ibang bansa, dahil nga, again, online ang lahat ng nangyayaring to. So, kahit saan, posible siyang mangyari. Um... And even if committed outside the Philippines, so kahit sa ibang bansa siya, hindi siya dito sa Pilipinas nangyari, and whether or not such act or acts constitute an offense at the place of the commission, so kahit pa hindi siya pinaparusan, pinaparusan or hindi pinaparusan, doon sa lugar kung saan siya nangyari, um, even if the crime or offense happened here in the Philippines or in another country, the Philippines still holds jurisdiction over the offense. So, may kapangyarihan ang Pilipinas para uh, kasuhan ang mga nag violate or mga naglalabag sa batas na to. Um, if the act is committed in another country, the suspect or accused is a Filipino citizen, a permanent resident of the Philippines, and um, the offender has committed the act against a Filipino citizen. Um, kaso lang, meron ding mga cases, mga instances, na wala ng jurisdiction or kapangyarihan na litisin pa ng Pilipinas yung uh, yung taong lumabag sa batas. Kailan nangyayari ito? So kapag ang foreign government or ang um, ang gobyerno nung offender, nung alien offender, um, ang 
ibang bansa ang nagpo-prosecute na or kinasuhan na yung alien, yung foreigner, um, ma pwedeng hindi na siya maging under the jurisdiction of the Philippines. Pero may exception pa rin. Meron pa rin um, exception na kapag in naman ng Department of Justice na um, mapailalim pa rin sa kapangyarihan ng Pilipinas yung uh, pagkaso dun sa foreigner, posible pa rin siyang maging, um, maging uh, sakop ng kapangyarihan ng Pilipinas. Masyadong legal na, no? Okay lang po ba? Or kailangan dahan-dahan pa? Or ayaw nyo na lang mag-law school pagkatapos nito? <laughs> okay, sa sunod na po tayo. Extradition and mutual legal assistance. Merong ganitong mga provision sa batas dahil nga ang batas na ito, maraming nasasangkot na foreigner. Um, so ang extradition at mutual legal assistance, um, uh, background niya ay international law. So medyo technical yung mga terms na ginagamit natin ngayon. Kaya dadahan-dahanan ko, dadahan ko na lang din. So, ano ang extradition? Extradition is a procedure. So, proseso siya kung saan by which a person accused or convicted of a crime under the law of one state is arrested in another and is returned for trial or to serve a sentence. So, anong halimbawa dito? Halimbawa, si John. Si John ay isang foreigner na kinasuhan dito sa Pilipinas. So, um, hindi citizen ng Philippines, hindi Filipino si John. Pero dahil dito sa extradition um, or extradition treaty or kasunduan um, between or sa pagitan ng dalawa o mas marami pang nasyon, um, posibleng makipag-usap yung, kunwari, US citizen si John. Makikipag-usap ang US sa Philippines, sa Pinas, na um, na i-apply yung extradition treaty or yung kasunduan regarding extradition kay John para mapabalik si John sa US at doon na lang siya hahatulan, doon na lang siya magsaserve ng sentence, doon na lang didinggin ng kaso niya. So, yun ang extradition. So, usually may ganong kasunduan ang mga bansa para, para din siyempre sa ikabubuti ng kanilang mga mamamayan. Next, uh, what is mutual legal assistance? So, it's a formal process by which states or jurisdictions seek and provide assistance in the investigation or prosecution of criminal offenses and in judicial proceedings related to criminal matters. So, from the word ex itself, mutual yung pagtutulungan ng mga bansa para... Um, para magkaroon ng investigasyon kapag nang, may nangyaring uh, paglabag sa batas na to. So, nag-uusap-usap ang mga bansa para makatulong, magtulungan, uh, para mas mapabilis yung kaso. So, dito sa Pilipinas, sino ang may kapangyarihan para um, asikasuhin, para, um, para asikasuhin yung mga ganitong uh, kaso, mga extradition, uh, mutual legal assistance. Under the law, the Department of Justice shall be the central authority for all requests of extradition and mutual legal assistance in all legal matters. So the government may surrender or extradite any person accused or convicted of child sexual abuse or exploitation uh, pursuant to the extradition law and applicable extradition treaty. So, kanina, sabi ko, ang extradition ay, ang treaty ay kasunduan sa pagitan ng dalawang bansa or kahit higit pa sa dalawang bansa. Um, the Department of Justice shall also make and receive requests for mutual legal assistance in criminal matters from a foreign state relative to the investigation or prosecution so iimbestigahan kakasuhan um, related to criminal proceedings to any form of child sexual abuse or exploitation and execute or arrange for the execution of such request for um, assistance
So, dito napapasok yung cooperation of law enforcement agencies in OSAIC and SISAEM investigation. So, kunwari nasa ibang bansa yung kakasuhan, anong mangyayari, uh, dito napapasok yung pagtutulong-tulungan ng mga law enforcement agencies na nandito sa Pilipinas, pati nang nandun sa ibang bansa. So, halimbawa, uh, dito sa Pilipinas, ang mga law enforcement agencies ay ang Philippine National Police at ang National Bureau of Investigation. Sa ibang bansa naman, uh, meron, meron sa US na Federal Bureau of Investigation or FBI, uh, ano pa, National, National Police siya ng Spain, Mossad ng Israel, So, yun yung mga law enforcement agencies. So, sila-sila yung nagtutulungan para maumpisahan yung investigasyon ng mga kasong paglabag sa anti-sexual uh, abuse um, and exploitation of children act. Um, so, uh, in recognizing the transnational nature of OSAEC and SISAEM, meaning, transnational meaning, it extends beyond the Philippine boundaries. So, kaya may pagtutulungan, may coordination na nangyayari with other countries. Um, the PNP, the Philippine National Police, and the National Bureau of Investigation shall endeavor to establish cooperation arrangements with foreign law enforcement for faster exchange of information, best practices, and joint investigation on these cases. So, under Section 19 of this Act of the Law, uh, jurisdiction over cases for the violation of this Act shall be vested in the Family Court, which has territor territorial jurisdiction over the place where the offense or any of its essential elements was committed. So, review lang tayo. Ang jurisdiction, ibig sabihin, may kapangyarihan. May kapangyarihan, otoridad, para dinggin yung kaso. So, um, binibigay ito sa mga family courts dito sa ating bansa. So, na-establish ang family courts sa, pa sa pamamagitan ng Family Courts Act of 1997. So, ano ang family courts? Basically, ang family courts, isang regional trial court, court din siya, pero um, uh, may special siyang um, role. Uh, ang family courts ang dumidinig sa mga kaso laban or sa mga kaso na Um, involve ang mga kabataan, ang mga minors, and pati yung mga um, kaso na relating to familial um, issues. So, ayan. So, fa sa family court siya didinggin or ang, ang lahat ng kaso under this act ay um, magiging sakop ng family courts. So, dito sa Kamsur, meron tayong family court sa Pili, meron din dito sa Naga. So, yan, mga regional trial courts din siya na dinesignate para maging family courts. Venue. So, saan pwedeng mag-file ng complaint, ng kaso? Una, where the offense was committed. Saan ba nangyari yung um, yung krimen? Ah, uh, Kunwari, um, may, may nag-record ng or nag-tape ng isang bata. Kung saan yun nangyari, pwedeng doon yung uh, uh, pag, pag, pagsampa ng kaso. Pangalawa, where any of its elements occurred. So, halimbawa, um, yung transaction, nangyari siya uh, parang binenta or child prostitution siya na yung bata ay nasa Naga City kunwari, tapos yung offender naman ay nasa sabi nating um, Pili nasa Pili. So posibleng, uh, pwedeng maaring mag-file ng kaso sa either sa Naga City or sa Pili na family court. Uh, and ang panghuli, where the child is found or actually resides at the time of the commission of the offense. So saan ba nakatira yung bata? Doon, doon din, pwede siya Kunwari, nakatira lang siya sa Naga City Doon lang din, isa sa mga Pwedeng venue Or family court Na uh, 
ipafile yung kaso ay sa Naga City. Um, the, this uh, law also ensures the right to privacy of the child, um, whether during the investigation, uh, yung, investig yung investigation ng kaso, prosecution, kapag may kaso na talaga, pag kapag nasa korte na, and trial of an offense under this act. Uh, anong mangyayari naman kapag ang um, hindi na biktima yung child? Ang child ay naging offender na. Siya na mismo yung nag-perpetrate ng crime. Siya na mismo yung gumawa or lumabag sa batas. So, the prosecution of the offense shall be in accordance with the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006 and the child shall be accorded the appropriate treatment and services under the said law. So mga juvi ito, mga juvi kung alam kung may mga napapanood kayo sa American series, ito yung mga tinatawag nilang ju juvi. Dito naman sa Pilipinas, um, ang tawag natin sa kanila madalas ay children um, in conflict with law. So ito yung mga juvenile children. So may mga special na or may mga treatment sa kanila at services na iba yung um, yung pag alaga or pag take sa kanila under custody. So, pero, kapag naman self-generated yung mga material, so, um, kunwari, si, yung child, yung child mismo yung nag, uh, gumawa ng recording, nag-take ng photos, um, tapos, siya mismo din yung nag-send doon kay buyer, doon sa trafficker, doon sa, um, ng bibiktima, consider pa rin siya, ma consider ba siyang offender? Sa kasong yon kapag siya mismo yung gumawa ng mga um, materials na uh, pinagbabawal, um, makukonsider siya as biktima instead. Hindi siya offender. So, um, the child victim shall be accorded the necessary treatment and services under this act. So, yung mga services, mamaya pag-uusapan din natin. So, how are investigations initiated? So, the law enforcement agencies are mandated. So, mandated, ibig sabihin, um, required uh, ang mga law enforcement agencies, ang PNP, NBI, na immediately mag-conduct ng in, uh, investigation. Uh, so, after nilang makuha yung mga statements, yung mga affidavits ng mga biktima, kailangan na nilang umpisahan yung investigasyon agad-agad. Agencies that receive uh, complaints of violations of this act shall develop both online and face-to-face -face reporting mechanisms that are gender-sensitive, age-appropriate, and culturally sensitive to children, especially girls. So, binibigyan natin ng halaga ang kababaihan dito rin sa act na to. So, mas binibigyan natin sila ng importansya. Who may file a complaint? Sino-sino nga ba ang pwedeng uh, makinig kayo? Kasi malay nyo, may, may mga kakilala kayo na biktima pala ng uh, paglabag ng mga any of the acts under this law. So, Sabi sa batas, ang complaints on cases on any form of child sexual abuse or exploitation uh, may be filed by the offended party, uh, second, by, the, by his or her parents or guardians, third, by his or her ascendant or collateral relative within the third degree of consanguinity. So, anong ibig sabihin ng third degree of consanguinity? Ang third degree of consanguinity, pwedeng sila ay yung lolo at lola, yung great-grandparents, kasama din dito, um, ang uncles, mga tito, tita, at mga kapatid. So, napapaloob sila sa third degree of sanguinity. Uh, ang officer, social worker, or representative of a licensed child caring institution, uh, a DSWD officer or social worker, Local Social Welfare Development Officer, um, any barangay official, any law enforcement officer, uh, at least three concerned responsible citizens residing in the place where the violation occurred, or any person who has personal knowledge 
of the circumstances of the commission of any offense under this act. So, personal knowledge. Ibig sabihin ng personal knowledge ay ikaw mismo, ikaw mismo yung may alam, yung nakakita, yung uh, ikaw mismo yung witness doon sa krimen na nangyari. Hindi pwedeng narinig mo lang na si, kunwari, uy, si, ano, si, sabi natin, si nene na biktima pala ng ganito ni na biktima pala ng online sexual abuse. Hindi pwede yung uh, rinig, narinig mo lang. Kasi yun, hearsay na yun. So, hindi na yun napapaloob sa personal knowledge. Dapat ikaw mismo yung may alam. So, affidavit of desistance. Ano nga ba ang affidavit of desistance? Ang um, affidavit of desistance is a written statement under oath. Ano ibig sabihin ng written statement under oath? Ibig sabihin, ninotaryohan, tinatakan ng notary public yung document, yung affidavit ng complainant, ng biktima na nagsasabing hindi na siya interesadong ipagpatuloy pa yung kaso. So, ang affidavit of desistance under this act ay hindi pinapayagan ng uh, authorities. So, um, hindi siya pa, hindi siya defense kung kunwari gustong i-dismiss kung gustong ipa-dismiss ipa uh, ipa-dismiss nung um, offender nung nung gumawa ng crime yung kaso ang hindi pwedeng dahil sa affidavit of desistance na inexecute or ginawa ng biktima ng fa- family niya or anyone at hindi rin pwedeng pilitin ang isang bata or yung biktima na gumawa ng affidavit of desistance. Kasi uh, kapag pinilit, magigirin siyang or mapaparusahan din yung taong pumilit uh, dun sa sa bata or sa kapamilya, uh, dun sa mga pwedeng mag-file ng complaint. Kaya naman, ang prosecutors, ibig sabihin, kung may defendant, ay kung, kung may defendant, sila ay pinagtatanggol ng uh, prosecutors. Sila yung mga accused, sila yung mga akusado. Uh, dinedepensahan sila ng mga... Uh, uh, so, ang prosecutor ay uh, directed to vigorously oppose and manifest objections to motions for dismissal. And, yeah... So, punta naman tayo sa protective custody of the child. So, importante din to para malaman natin kung um, ano bang mangyayari sa bata uh, na naging biktima ng, uh, ng batas na to, ng paglabag sa batas na to. So, una, what is protective custody? Child protective custody is a type of care to protect the child from harm coming from outside sources. So, Under this law, the city or municipal social welfare development office uh, exercises protective custody over the child. Um, kapag hindi naman kinaya ni city or municipal social welfare development office, dyan napapasok si DSWD or yung national naman na social welfare development office. Um, ayan. So the DSWD and the DOJ, again, ito yung mga ahensya na importante dito, DSWD at DOJ, shall extend all necessary legal assistance and support to uh, the city or municipal social welfare development office for any legal impediment that may arise in, perf- in performing their functions in assuming temporary protective custody. Um, So the child shall also be considered as a victim of a violent crime under uh, an act called an act creating a board of claims under the Department of Justice for victims of unjust imprisonment or detention and victims of violent crimes and for other purposes. So sa ilalim ng batas na ito, um, any person who is a victim 
of a violent crime may file claims for compensation or for damages. So, ito na yung mga services na pwedeng extend sa mga uh, na extend Hindi lang pwede, pero i-extend. Mandatory siya. Um, kailangan siyang ibigay sa mga biktima ng child sexual abuse or exploitation. So, quick lang, emergency shelter, bahay, counseling, uh, free legal services, medical or psychological services, livelihood and skills training. So, kailangan bigyan natin sila ng um, i-train natin sila pa para kung paano paano mabuhay ang kabuhayan nila uh, educational assistance um, itong batas na to sinisigurado din nila na poproteksyonan ang mga kabataan na may disabilities so children with disabilities are, are taken with a lot of consideration under this act and para mabigyan sila ng access to justice so again, the National Coordination Center shall develop and Im implement the necessary programs that will prevent the commission of um, the violations of this act. So under siya ng Interagency Council Against Trafficking, um, so yan yung uh, ahensya na nakatutok para sa mga kasong uh, regarding online uh, sexual abuse or exploitation of children. Um, ito. Uh, under, sabata, uh, under the law, uh, local government units are also um, encouraged to pass a local ordinance to localize the efforts against online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. So, dito sa Naga City, uh, wala pang ordinansa regarding dito kasi bago pa lang naman siyang batas. Pero last year, um, nagkaroon na ng coordination meeting, consultative meeting, si Vice Mayor with other stakeholders para maumpisahan na, para um, makagawa na ng isang ordinansa laban sa paglabag sa mga um, online sexual uh, abuse and exploitation. Uh, this new law will strengthen the country's response to addressing the rising vulnerability and victimization of Filipino children by online predators. So the passage of this act positions the Philippines as one of the first countries in East Asia and the Pacific region to have an institutionalized and collaborative approach to prevention and response against online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. So, sana yung mga na-discuss kanina ni Doc Bon, na take note natin, no? Kasi uh, mahalaga na alam natin yung mga uh, pinagbabawal na gawain, mga pro prohibited acts, mga unlawful acts under sa batas na to. Dahil posibleng may kakilala tayo na na biktima na biktima rin para matulungan natin sila at um, uh, kailangan ipalaga na pa natin yung awareness yung uh, yung kaalaman tungkol dito para mas maraming tao ang hindi na mabiktima yun naman yung goal natin ngayon eh para maiwasan natin ang pagiging pagkakaroon ng mga kabataan na na bibiktima ng mga ganitong gawain na na to take advantage um, so let us all help uh, stop uh, the uh, sexual abuse and exploitation of children. So be the voice of the children who needs help, who need help. Teach uh, children how to stay safe online. So kailangan din natin silang gabayan sa uh, tamang paggamit ng uh, internet, ng ng online space. Uh, kailangan din natin encourage ang government para mas ma-implement ito ng maayos para mas um, uh, mas maprotektahan yung mga ta yung mga kabataan natin at 
para sa ating lahat um, palagi na since uh, online na tayong lahat online we're already living in an online world na na parang um, lahat ng nangyayari transactions halos nagiging online na lahat let's stay safe online uh, yun naman ay yun nga yung kasabihan na think before you click wag magpapaloko sa on, sa online sa mga online na um, scams or uh, basically maging mas mapanuri siguro tayo um, and um, for civil society organizations we also need to mobilize communities including children, parents, caregivers and families to increase awareness and protective behavior so we thank the um, Archbishop of, uh, Archdiocese of Caceres and the Caceres Office uh, for Women and Children Protection uh, and children protection dahil dito sa pag-organize uh, ng uh, lecture series regarding online sexual abuse and exploitation. Of course, the theology department. And that's the end of our lecture regarding the law. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Steve and Ms. Jessica, for the very informative and clear directives on anti-online sexual abuse or exploitation of children and our youths that has plagued our country. On that note, may I request Father Jonans and Ma'am Gloria to please award the certificate, please, on the stage. And for sharing, Dr. Steve and Ms. Jessica, for sharing to us your valuable time and knowledge, please accept this simple token of appreciation and certificate. Allow me first to read the citation of the certificate. Certificate of appreciation is awarded to Dr. Stephen Jo T. Bonilla and Ms. Jessica L. Chua for their time and expertise as speaker during the St. Josephine Bakita Lecture Series on Freedom Identity and discipleship in partnership with Atene de Naga University Theology Department with the topic Republic Act 11930 Anti-Online Sexual Abuse or Exploitation of Children Act of 2022 given this 10th of February in the year of the Lord 2023 at the Atene de Naga University in Naga City signed Mrs. Gloria C. San Antonio Chair Theology Department Father Jonans Vibar, Chairperson Cao CP, and Most Reverend Rolando J. Triaterona, OCDDD, Archbishop of Caceres. A round of applause, please. Again, thank you so much, Ms. Jessica and Dr. Steve. Now at this point, we now proceed to the second talk. May I call in our fellow faculty, um, Mr. Jandi Bagajon, to introduce to us our speaker for the second talk, Sir Jandi. Good morning. The second speaker, uh, it is with uh, great honor and privilege to introduce to you our second speaker. He earned his bachelor degree at Mater Salutis Seminary in Ligaspi, earning AB Classical Philosophy, minor in Religious Education. He did his master's degree in pastoral ministry at the Loyola School of Theology in Manila and then he is uh, in his ongoing PhD in moral theology 
and right now he is writing his dissertation on the biblical foundations of uh, the relationship of husband and wife. On a personal note, sorry bro. <laughs> on a personal note, he is a devoted and faithful husband to Kun Marie. A beloved father of two, a very humble colleague, and a teacher of the theology department of Ateneo de Naga University. A dear friend and a mentor of mine, a brother who is willing to journey with all of us. So, my dear students, friends, guests, let us all welcome Marco C. Giriva. Thank you, bro. I choose to speak here because I want to uh, control the PowerPoint myself. Hindi ako sanay na may assistant. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stephen Joe Bonilla and Miss Jessica Chua for enlightening us about Republic Act 11. 930, known as the Anti-Online Sexual Abuse or Exploitation of Children Act of 2022. Indeed, these newly created uh, laws are a step closer in the fight against human trafficking. My talk is about the response of Sorry. The response of the Filipino family to the call of the CBCP for prayer and awareness on human trafficking, a bigger issue compared to the sexual abuse of children online. I do not claim expertise on human trafficking. In fact, I declined the first uh, topic given to me, which is familial trafficking. For me, I think DSWD could talk more about familial trafficking. My familiarity with the topic comes from a paper I wrote in my PhD coursework on the topic online prostitution. So it's from my uh, paper uh, that I became familiar with the issue of human trafficking. My paper was written in 2019. With this, I may have views here that may no longer be updated with the newly passed Republic Act 11930. Well, let us see, uh, especially maybe later in the open forum, maybe some of my views uh, may be clarified. Now, why are we talking about human trafficking here? This lecture series, uh, the St. Josephine Bakita lecture series, is a response to the call of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines for an awareness against human trafficking. CBCP called for a day of prayer and awareness against human trafficking, which is planned to become an annual event starting this year. This day is celebrated around the time of the Feast of St. Joseph in Bakita, which is celebrated every eighth day of the month of February. The response of the Archdiocese of Caceres to the call of the CBCP is a week-long activity. Okay? So, ginalingan ng Archdiocese. It's a week-long activity and this is uh, the culmination of those activities. A lecture about 
human trafficking. This talk attempts to formulate a response of the Filipino family to the issue of human trafficking. Hence, the title The Complexities of Human Trafficking and the Response of the Filipino Family. Before formulating a response, it dwells first on understanding the complexity of human trafficking. First, it recognizes that human trafficking is a real social problem in the Philippines. As attested to by published scholarly articles and by international watchdogs on human trafficking. Second, it acknowledges that the problem is complex. Hence, the solution to this problem is not simple. The first speaker was also uh, mentioning that it's not uh, easy to solve. Third, it proposes a multidisciplinary approach to the problem. Theology does not claim to solve the problem alone by herself. At the same time, this talk warns that mere creation of laws cannot solve the problem. Creation of laws and enforcing the law are two different things. We, have, we may have a beautifully created law, but it may not be successfully enforced for various reasons. This talk ends with a proposal that value formation, which starts in the family, can reinforce the fight against human trafficking. It's not the only solution, but it is something that can help in the fight against human trafficking. So, let us affirm first that human trafficking is a social problem in the Philippines. Human trafficking is a social problem attested to as existing in the Philippines by authors. For example, a 2010 study of Carmen R. Zaft and Sriani Tidbal entitled A Survey of Child Sex Tourism in the Philippines claimed that male foreigners were traveling to the country to engage in sex with children. Tidbal and Saft reported that the United States State Department listed the Philippines in the Tire 2 watch list in 2009 annual report on human trafficking. The U.S. Department of State Defense defines Tier 2 as countries okay, with governments who do not fully comply with the minimum standards but are making significant efforts to bring themselves into compliance with those standards. The absolute number of victims were severe forms of trafficking and is very significant or significantly increasing. Or these are countries where there, are, there is significant, uh, there is failure to provide evidence of increasing efforts to combat severe forms of trafficking in persons from the previous year. So, nasa tire 2 tayo. We don't know sa ngayon because we have a newly passed law kung ano ang rating sa atin about uh, human trafficking. 
In the video recorded message of Archbishop Terona earlier, he stressed that human trafficking is happening in the Philippines and it has aggravated when the pandemic happened. Its preponderance is also affirmed by Dr. Bonilla, both in the videos he shown us and in the data he provided on the human trafficking in our country. Human trafficking is a complex problem. Human trafficking is commonly attributed to poverty. Human trafficking may be discreetly promoted by some sectors in their effort to boost tourism industry for the betterment of the economy of a locality. It could be done through internet-based transactions. It could operate transnationally, meaning it could be done in one country while the customer and the trafficked person are in two other different countries. Human trafficking is complex because of its very definition. We will try to understand how do we understand human trafficking later in uh, an activity that I will ask you to do. Human trafficking is interconnected with other social issues like prostitution, pornography, which have symbiotic relationship with other businesses in the internet world. Human trafficking needs a multidisciplinary approach. Mere creation of laws, as I have mentioned earlier, will not suffice to solve the problem of human trafficking. Organized criminals are operating transnationally who have legal ex experts who study how they can do away with laws in particular countries. Moreover, laws differ from one country to another. For example, prostitution may be legal in some countries, but not in countries like the Philippines. Hence, you would notice that the focus of the prohibitions in the laws that we have is on minors. Because in other countries, it is also illegal to prostitute minors. With this, Enforcement of Philippine laws is difficult. Okay? If we deal with perpetrators, with people doing this thing online from other countries. In addition, law enforcement, as I have said, is totally a different thing from mere creation of laws. In the enforcement, sometimes the business interest puts pressure, okay? particularly at, in the name of tourism. Now, in support of the creation of laws against human trafficking, theology promotes, medyo gas gas na ito, but this is very important, the respect and protection of the dignity of each person, regardless of age gender, economic, and social status. Now, let us try to understand the complexity of understanding or our uh, common understanding of what is human trafficking. 
I invite you to uh, try to use quizzes. There are here who are my uh, current students. They are familiar with quizzes. Please uh, try to participate in our discussion by answering j just a few questions here. Maybe to clarify our uh, understanding of human trafficking based from the previous uh, talks. Also, you can search the internet if you want okay, for uh, a reference on your answer. Okay. Okay. For those who can access the internet, I want you to join my quizzes so that you can answer questions and we can see the answers uh, of students. Okay, please join. Uh, the code is 629920. 629920. Okay, maybe we need a few seconds for you to join. Okay, I can, we can now see that there are a f five, six, ten students who join. Okay, maybe we can start with a question. Those who are still joining may still join. Uh, they can answer the next questions. Okay, let us start. Try to give an answer to this question. The question is prostitution and human trafficking are the same. Is it true or is it false? Let us see what's the answer. Okay, the majority of those who were able to join said that prostitution and human trafficking are not the same. We will see later uh, when I go back to my slides. <coughs> uh, it's actually a tricky uh, topic and uh, legal legalities about uh, the issue of human trafficking may be capitalizing on our definition of what is human trafficking as distinguished from prostitution. Okay, let's go to the next question. You, need, you have third, uh, three minutes to answer and uh, with some explanation. How is the crime human trafficking committed? What are the elements in the act that will constitute the crime as human trafficking? And let us see answers. Okay. So test na ito, siguro kanina sa lecture, you learned something about human trafficking. Okay. 
Merong sagot, exploitation must be there. Okay. Meron akong hindi ah uh, acts means purpose. Okay, tatlong element na may mention kanina, merong act, merong means, merong purpose. Technical terms na ito. Ah uh, acts mean purpose. Meron ditong sagot, victims are targeted on their vulnerabilities and traffic between countries and regions using deception or coercion. Once they arrive at their destination, they are stripped of their autonomy, freedom of movement and choice and are forced to work in precarious conditions. Okay. May sexual abuse, may grooming, okay. My looting, okay? Good, you are learning. You learn from uh, the talks. My selling, pandering, exploitation for profit. My malicious intent, my act, my purpose. When there is a business selling the service of a bot and a buyer, that buys the service Kate, from Kate. Uh, try to uh, remember this. We will have a uh, slide that will illustrate that. I took the uh, slide from the presentation of uh, Miss Chua okay, and I will show it again. Itong business setting, service of the bot and buyer that buys. Okay, we will try to take a look at that. Okay, time is up. <clears throat> okay, thank you for your answers. Uh, so, nakikinig naman, may mga napulot sa previous talk. Uh, I have one more question before we go back to my slides. Let us answer this. kang naghang pa yata. Okay. Uh, ayun. I'm only using data. So, nawawala minsan yung Okay, umulit yung question. Uh, let's go to the next. I think this was also mentioned uh, earlier. So, my forced labor. Etong answer ni Delorino, uh, sexual trafficking, uh, forced labor. Sabi ni Shiz, meron daw human trafficking uh, as uh, sex trafficking, forced labor, and debt bondage. Okay. Merong term na maybe from the internet world, sextortion. Okay, dito from Kate. 
pang ano to, A student si Kate. Okay? Sexual, uh, trafficking, pros, uh, the same prostitution, may organ uh, extraction or organ black marketing and forced labor. So, importante ito. That's also a form of uh, human trafficking. Okay? Uh, apuya. Forced labor, uh, forced criminal activities. Okay? Uh, there was a time na maraming cases ng mga Filipinos na nahuhuli na may daladalang drugs in airports. Okay? It could be a case of uh, human trafficking in order to perform forced criminal activities. They are transported to a particular country. Pagdating doon, kinuha yung kanilang mga travel documents and they are given other fake documents. They are asked to travel to other countries bringing drugs. Okay? There was a time na maraming cases na ganyan sa Pilipinas. I hope it's no longer uh, o baka hindi lang report Okay, we have 12 seconds before we the next. Okay, pwede na natin i-close. Uh, I would just would like to acknowledge the presence of our Father President. He is here with us, Father Robert. <laughs> okay, uh, that... Let me just go back to my slide. Okay. Uh, I hope I can capture the answers, but I think uh, we can be assured of na meron ng awareness. Okay, meron ng mga terms. Uh, etong grupo na to, I hope yung kung uh, naka-online pa tayo, I hope yung nasa online, they also pick up something about the topic uh, human trafficking. Now, I want you to take a look at this. I actually took the uh, slide of uh, Ms. Chua. Uh, ito yung common understanding natin ng trafficking. Okay? Uh, may tatlong persons. Okay? The victim, the customer, and there is a facilitator. That's our common understanding. Okay? Uh, and of course, there is a consideration of probably money, favor, or sometimes yung consideration is coercion, pinipilit yung, yung tao. Now, the question here would be, what if walang facilitator? Will that constitute human trafficking? Paano kung wala yung facilitator? Okay? Isa sa bibigyan kong diin sa aking explanation ay the internet world can be the facilitator itself. Or there are persons in the internet world could be, who could be the facilitator but they operate anonymously. Hindi kilala. Okay? Or it may be in the form of a site okay? that connects the seller and then the buyer. Okay? Uh, the complexity of the definition of human trafficking is because uh, as a crime that must involve compelling, coercing a person to provide labor service or to engage in commercial sex acts. Okay? Yan yung complexity niya. Merong someone compelling. Okay? Paano kung wala? Okay? So, uh, pwede na ba yun gawin? Illegal pa rin ba yun? Okay? Uh, now, we know also that uh, there are types of uh, human trafficking as uh, answered by uh, many of you like forced labor 
uh, forced criminal activity, sexual exploitation, organ extraction. Uh, this definition, as I have uh, highlighted with a uh, uh, slide I captured from Ms. Chua, presupposes a third party. Okay? Merong third party between the trafficked and the customer. Or, pwede rin, at least it is the buyer, okay? it is the customer himself or herself who coerces the trafficked person. Siya mismo yung nagko-coerce. Pero ang tanong pa rin, paano kung walang coercion? Okay? So, yun yung complexity ng definition ng term ng human trafficking. Na supposedly, dapat mas maka-clarify siya with the legal definitions when it is uh, made into laws. Okay? But so far, ang nakita natin sa ating uh, law ay specific on children. Okay? Kanina, sabi ko, da, kailangan regardless of age. Okay? we have to recognize that that is still trafficking. There are also cases of uh, trafficked persons who are coerced by family members themselves. It was mentioned in, uh, in uh, the talk before uh, my talk. Okay, so that's also a kind of uh, trafficking, petting my coercion, okay? Uh, pwedeng children, pero pwede ring adults. Okay? Yung kinocoerce. So, crime pa ba yun? So, those are questions that we may have to to reckon with with the current laws that we have in the Philippines. Now, we will focus on the most common, which is trafficking for sexual exploitation. Okay? So, yun yung focus natin uh, so that we have... Uh, more focus in our discussion. Okay? <clears throat> Human trafficking involves compelling, coercing, or inducing a person to provide labor or service or to engage in commercial sex acts. However, according to uh, Farley and uh, uh, company, trafficking by definition uh, may be different from prostitution, pero according to Farley and company, it is impossible to distinguish prostitution from trafficking in most cases. Uh, si Farley is uh, writing, actually, uh, commenting on the case in the United States, wherein there are states in the U.S. na legal yung prostitution for legal age. Okay? So, yung tanong natin kanina, magkaiba ba talaga yung prostitution at saka human trafficking? Okay? That could be settled uh, Sana by the legal definitions in laws. But so far, what we have seen uh, in the laws that are passed, ang human trafficking seems to be focused only on the understanding of trafficking of children or at least those who are uh, not capable of deciding for themselves. Okay? Now, it complex then yung uh, human trafficking uh, because of the use of the internet. Uh, as I've said uh, earlier, uh, mahirap i prosecute. But we have seen na may mga provisions na tayo ngayon sa uh, Republic Act 11930. Uh, okay, sana mas magbigay yun ng ipin to prosecute those who are operating beyond national boundaries. Okay? Uh, complex siya dahil uh, pwedeng 
anonymous siya sa internet yung third party okay now uh, human trafficking is a multi-billion interconnected businesses lurking in the internet world okay uh, this is coming from uh, Zap and Tidball okay, in their study 9 million dollar global slave industry so uh, symbiotic relationship siya with many other uh, similar uh, similar uh, businesses advertising uh, like sex toys advertising services pornographic materials and those who advertise in those sites okay merong mga uh, dating apps that are supporting this kind of uh, business which in some countries are legal okay? I am given five minutes so let me uh... now one thing that we have to uh, consider also patrons of services of traffic persons may also be victims themselves because of their addiction in the internet pwedeng nag start sila sa pornography and then later on, na hooked sila into the services offered in the sites that they are able to access from the internet. So it's one thing that we have to consider also. With this, the importance of pinning down actually the third party, which is difficult in the internet world because they could be anonymous. Okay? Uh, psychology may explain why a person is addicted to patronizing services of traffic persons. Okay, like for example, the correlation between self-esteem and accessing pornographic materials from the internet. With this, these persons may also be seen as victims of human trafficking, okay, of a third party. Okay, uh, now what is the response of the Filipino family? Uh, of course, the Philippine family welcomes the creation of laws against human trafficking as a positive development, but understands that that is not enough to stop human trafficking. The current laws, of course, is far better than the revised penal code enacted in 1930, where it says uh, that the sale of sex uh, and defines prostitute as women who, for mostly uh, for money or profit, habitually indulge in sexual intercourse for the serious conduct. Dito makikita nyo yung, per, yung, yung abuser is the one who sells. So, malayo na yung nagawa natin with the current laws that we have. We have already identified na yung, uh, yung victimizer ay hindi yung seller and we have also identified a third party. Okay, so we welcome this development. Okay. The limitation of laws is understood as coming from problems of definition, okay, enforcement, economic pressure, and the use of internet. So the Filipino family must understand that. And we must work within these uh, limitations. With this, the Filipino family uh, must reiterate that respect for the kapwa tao, the katuod for the bikulan, uh, as equal in dignity. Okay? Sorry, my typo error. The kapwa, the katuod, must be seen as equal in dignity. Okay? This respect for the kapwa uh, is reinforced by the Christian faith which teaches that every person is created in the image and likeness of God. Okay. If we have that in mind, if we inculcate that understanding in us as Filipino families, I think that could help us avoid okay, participating in human trafficking. Uh, I have a favorite uh, understanding of relationships from uh, Carol Watila, who later on became John Paul II, on, uh, written in his book, Love and Responsibility. Para sa kanya, relationship with one another uh, must be loving the other person. And for him, uh, using a person is actually opposite to loving persons. So whenever we deal with other people, we must be mindful if we are really loving the person or we are just using the person. 
Okay. With this, we have to uh, always be mindful that the families are the first teachers of equality and dignity. Uh, each member of the family must be respected and his dignity protected. It is painful to imagine that there are Filipino families whose family members are trafficking the other member of the family. Filipino families are called to be vigilant in spotting and reporting possible cases of familial trafficking okay? or trafficking in the neighborhood or trafficking in one's social circle. The law that is presented to us provides the uh, avenue for reporting on, of these illegal activities. Okay. I'm down to my uh, second to the last slide. Now, Gaudium et Spes, uh, paragraph 49, emphasizes the equal personal dignity of wife and husband. Okay? If there is respect for equality and dignity in the husband and uh, wife, that flows to the equality and dignity understanding of the entire family. The child learns equality and dignity from their parents. Okay? The family who respects each uh, other, okay, who respects the dignity of each other, can respect the dignity of others in the community. Okay? And they can be the protectors of dignity of others when they see that there are, uh, there are crimes perpetrated in their own circles. Okay? So that respect for dignity in the family must always be seen as rooted in the treatment of the very origin of the family, which is the husband and the wife, which according to Gaudium, it says has equal dignity. So together with creating laws, intensifying enforcement, clarifying le legal definitions, and working with IT experts, theology believes that nurturing in the family a value system that respects and protects the dignity of the human person could reinforce the fight against human trafficking. That's all. Thank you. Before I say some word of thanks to Sir Mark, I'd like to thank Father Robert for taking his time out of his busy schedule to be with us this morning. Thank you, Father Robert. Thank you, Sir Mark, for showing us the importance and significance of strengthening of values in the family in respect and protection of dignity of the human person. On that note, and for sharing to us your valuable time and knowledge, please accept this simple token of appreciation and certificate. Please allow me to read the citation. This certificate of appreciation is awarded to Marco C. Geriba, PhD candidate, for sharing his time and expertise as speaker during the St. Josephine Bakita lecture series on freedom, identity, and discipleship in partnership with Atene de Naga University Theology Department with the topic, The Complexities of Human Trafficking and the Response of the Filipino Family, given this 10th of February in the year of the Lord 2023 at the Atene de Naga University, Naga City, Signed, Mrs. Gloria C. San Antonio, Father John Nans Vibar, Chairperson Cao CP, and Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Terona, OCDDD, Archbishop of Cáceres. Thank you once again, Sir Mark. Are you still okay there? Now, for those who are uh, watching us online through the live stream of the FB page of the 
Caceres, our Archdiocese of Caceres, and for our students online, please do send us emoticons uh, for us to know if you're still here with us this morning. And for our final and third talk, our speaker is the Executive Director of Voice of the Free, a seasoned management expert and a seasoned social worker. She's been with the Voice of the Free for 19 years already. Mam Cheryl is an expert in private and public sector partnership. She builds and manages the first ever anti-human trafficking task force in Zamboanga City in partnership with the Bureau of Immigration, Department of Social Welfare and Development, Philippine Ports Authority, different law enforcement agencies, and lo local government units. She's also part of the training team of sea-based and air-based anti-trafficking task forces in Zamboanga City, headed by the Department of Justice. She served as a resource person on human trafficking of children during the International Children's Trust Conference and annual general meeting in London. She facilitated and helped organize the international field exchange at Lima, Peru, Hong Kong, and the United States. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Ms. Cheryl Luceno, Executive Director of the Voice of the Free VF Foundation Incorporated. I'm Cheryl. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for that kind introduction. Um, okay, pa ba tayo? Medyo pa lunch na po tayo. I hope we still have the energy no, to listen and later on to be involved dito sa discussion natin. So first, of course, I would like to thank um, the Archdiocese of Caceres through Father Jonens and of course the Ateneo di Dinaga University for having us to share our programs at the Voice of the Free. So Basically, Voice of the Free po, we are formerly called the Visayan Forum Foundation. Kung naririnig niyo po yung Visayan Forum. But then, uh, we changed our name because it's really difficult, you know, during the international gatherings, explaining who is Visayan Forum. Kasi parang local term, no? And yung first impression ay parang print or news. Ando po kami. Uh, media. So, through uh, Voice of the Free, the name itself, um, shows our cause po. We're giving voice to voiceless, voiceless victims of human trafficking and other um, modern slavery um, cases. So yun po. Pero disclaimer lang po, no, if you will try to check Visayan Forum, sa sadly po to say, yung Visayan Forum site turned out into a pornography site. So, kasi po, dati, di ba, so nag-change kami ng website at hindi na po namin minamanage. We're not the host anymore of the site. So, ang ginawa po nung host Benenta, yung hosting, yung, yung website itself, it's because sobrang taas na po nung aming traffic. So, pag gaganan, di ba, pag mataas yung traffic na ng website mo, mas madami, na, ma mas madami ka ng reach at mas madami na yung titingin doon sa website. So, ano lang po, huwag nyo na i-check kasi masyasyak lang po kayo. So yeah, so Voice of the Free, we are a non-government organization working for the welfare of the marginalized migrants for three decades now po. No? So three decades na po kami in the front line. So we're really protecting victims and vulnerable individuals as, as well as communities. So we're not just limited po no, to trafficking victims. We're also organizing vulnerable communities. So meron po kami in Visayas and Mindanao. So um, we have established four core strategies. So kami po sa Voice of the Free, we have a 360 degree intervention. So we have prevention program, we have protection program. So we're running short term and long term shelter facilities po. So we're catering um, human trafficking victims. And during the pandemic po, we adjusted our intervention. We also cater to those um, at risk children na. Kasi uh, dumami po no, yung cases and potential victims of trafficking during the pandemic. And then we also have special cases like incest. It really happens po no, yung incest. And then when I had a meeting with the SWD Region 5, sinabi po nila na dito sa, sa atin, sa Bicol, taga Bicol din po kasi ako, 
Uh, marami yung cases na natin ng USAEC din dito sa Bicol region. So, ganun po, no? nag evolve yung mga cases natin ng human trafficking. So, kanina, um, yung discussions natin, no? more on laws, ano ba itong USAEC, ano yung OSEC, ano yung interventions na ginagawa na ng different agencies. Ang tanong ko po, kayo ba, mga kabataan, may magagawa kontra human trafficking? Parang walang sumagot. Si ma'am lang sumagot. Meron wala? Meron. Sure kayo ah? Ready ba kayo ma-involve sa fight against human trafficking? Yes! Mahina. Nagugutom na yata. Lunch na ba muna tayo? May magagawa ba laban human trafficking yung mga kabataan? Anyway, sige. At least may yes. Kahit kulang pa sa energy. So yes, so ang focus po ng discussion ko today is our intervention sa Voice of the Free focusing on the youth. So kami po, no, tawag po namin doon yung I Fight Movement. Kami po ay na-feature sa CNN Freedom Project. So dito po nag-start yung aming um, I Fight Movement na tinatawag. Okay? So papakita ko, po, ko lang po yung video what is I Fight Movement na na-feature po ng CNN. So dito po makikita nyo yung mga real cases ng human trafficking. Worst Cases po talaga, highly syndicated cases na cater po namin sa foundation. Okay? Few of us have ever seen evil up close. But the girls in this story all have. They are just a few of the one million children believed to be involved in human trafficking around the world. My name is Leif Corlin. Two years ago, I traveled to the Philippines to cover a story about child prostitution. That's when I first met a woman named Cecilia Flores Obanda who has committed her life to protecting children and fighting modern-day slavery. Now she's hoping to convince the Philippines' favorite son, Manny Pacquiao, to lead the battle. But for those fighting for a better world, nothing in life comes easy. When I see Westerners in the red light district, I know that they are buying flesh. They are the destination area of our trafficking girls, and if no one patronize that, and if no Westerner go to that area, there's no business for traffickers in the Philippines. Transactions between prostitutes and Johns are done out in the open, even at popular cafes in Manila's ritzy business district. The Filipino government estimates there are 800,000 people working in the illegal sex industry. And they estimate anywhere from 60,000 to 600,000 are children. By the time this girl we'll call Maria turned 15, she'd had several dozen sexual partners. And every one of them had paid money to rape her. She said that she was 15 years old when she was recruited. When she arrived, she thought it's an restaurant, but it's a casa. And when she get out, uh, go inside and climb the second floor, she find out around 16 more girls actually staying in that small place. There are some of them that are younger than her, 13 years old, 14 years old. Behind this door, a house of horror. Maria's virginity was sold for $250 to a foreign man. After that first traumatizing experience, her captors continued capitalizing on her youth. There are times that they are forced to serve at least uh, 13 customers per day. Many of the men who buy sex pay a premium for virgins and traffickers are willing to go to extreme and disgusting measures to satisfy the demand. And since she said that it's very difficult to find virgins, they are forced to, uh, to get a cotton, dip it in a blood, pigeon's blood, and put it, it in their sex organ. 
we were able to raid the casa and we're able to recover around 23 more girls and since then actually she's an instrumenter to a lot of reports she's afraid it's scary. It's scary the Versailles form took Maria's recruiter and the owner of the brothel to court but a judge dismissed the case it's morning in Manila's North Harbor Cecilia Flores Obanda and her anti-trafficking organization, the Visayan Forum, have answered the prayers of more than 20,000 girls and young women trapped in modern-day slavery. Amen, amen. Okay, let's go. They've conducted thousands of operations like this before. Many of the victims rescued share stories of horrific abuse while hidden away in back rooms and brothels. With thousands of passengers headed off the boat in a matter of minutes, Cecilia and the team must act quickly if they hope to catch Marina. the traffickers. Marina, sana sila. The first thing that struck me is the, the group that's in the middle, which actually shows very, very young children. Uh, the lady in the middle is actually giving them instructions. What kind of job they have, where are they going to do, you know, where they are going. Cecilia talks with the group. She's casual and calculating. Always probing for signs the suspects may not be telling the truth. They kept on changing the work, and when I asked um, some, you know, identification documents, she cannot also show anything. The third group appears to be something else entirely. As officers escort the suspects off the boat, I'm struck by how routine this all appears to be. Human trafficking is a hidden crime. The United Nations believes it exists on every continent, in nearly every country. But Obanda says she's constantly frustrated by how few people in the Philippines are aware of the danger. It requires a whole country to realize that we are all vulnerable and our children were actually sold and resold as sex toys, forced into servitude, forced into slavery. Obanda believes if she can just convince a major star to join the fight against modern slavery, it could turn the tide. She has one man in mind. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao! Obanda dreams of what it would mean if he became human trafficking's most fearsome opponent. I hope that Manny realized that uh, this, this is maybe the, the hardest or the toughest fight that he will wage in his entire life because uh, this fight go beyond 12 rounds. <laughs> Poverty is often the first thing visitors notice when coming to Manila. Then, it's the pollution. These are the channels that trace through Manila. They are too polluted to drink from. Still, the children of these slums use the filthy water to bathe and play. The diseased fish, known here as janitors to the locals, are fill only for the emptiest of stomachs. In some ways, finding victims of human trafficking is like trying to catch a fish. While hundreds may exist below the surface, pulling them out isn't easy. And in most cases, rescues can only be done a few at a time. The girls Obanda's team rescued aboard the ship the day before have now gotten a good night's rest, and they're starting to talk to the social workers. During the night when they are already relaxed, they actually said that the actually no, this trafficker will bring them to the cyber sex uh, den and then we were talking about you know, doing some uh, prostitution work also. We have already the dental aging report of the Coast Guard and it shows that we have two minors in the group. Um, one of them is around 15 years old and the other one is around 16 or 17 years old. So that's a qualified trafficking. Cybersex is a relatively new phenomenon in the Philippines. The internet makes it easy for pedophiles to abuse children anywhere in the world. It's scary, it's sickening, and it's incredibly hard for law enforcement to stop. Afternoon at the Center of Hope. There are about 30 girls here. They range from 12 to 20 years old. 
Every girl in this room was sold in one way or another, some as domestic servants, others were rescued from brothels. The girls filled their days playing, talking, learning skills, all the while living behind locked gates and long fences, because it's too dangerous to expose them to the streets in which they were born. It's like a jail, where only the innocent are locked away. You may notice, like we did, the lack of furniture. Obanda is hoping to find money for that soon. But at least the girls have room to play. The Visayan Forum is just trying to keep the lights on and the cupboards full. We need rice, very basic. Uh, we need to feed them. We need medicine because some of them actually suffer from STDs. We need, um, we need just like, for example, a t-shirt or a pair of shoes, you know. Beyond that, of course, we would like to give them a good training because beyond, beyond everything, what is really important is they learn to dream again, they learn to be child again. May is typically the rainy season here, but it was bright and sunny on the day we met three girls at the center, all under the age of 12. The three girls is a very precious girls for us <laughs> because they are really very sweet. <laughs> They have faces that light up a room, only it's too dangerous to show them. They're so young and innocent. But if you really look in their eyes, the trauma is really so deep that uh, until now, they, they wake up in the middle of the night screaming and crying because they are so afraid that the trafficker will come again. Sometimes we don't really understand why one of the kids just sometimes suddenly got sick and she always vomit. And our psychologist said that because she remembers what these guys in the internet asked her to do. Uh, internet cafe po. Pinapagawa po sa akin yung pinapahubad, tapos pinapasayaw. Medyo nahiya po ako kasi hindi po ako sanay na makahubad ako ng ganun. Mas nasanay lang ako na may damit, kaya ako nahiya. Saan kayo pinapasayaw? Doon po sa harap ng kamera. Naguhubad din po tapos pinapasayaw. Tapos po na pinapabaka ka din po kami na pagay. They're covering their ears. They, they don't even to hear, hear themselves saying it. What is it? What is it? May pinipili po ko may pinipili po sila sa amin kung sino ang kung sino ang makakapagano sa lalaki. Tapos kung ako naman ang pipiliin yung lalaki pin paupo tapos ako yung parang sinabak na eh. Una yung parang ipo pinapunta dito na eh. Tapos yung lalaki na kabuka. So minsan po na yung pinapagawa yung umiihi na eh. Ah, umiihi. Yung ano na eh. Dinay yung kasamahan namin na yun. Yung ano na yun? Yung juice na yun. Ano na yun? Sinasagula ng ihi. Tapos na iniinom. Kasi na yun kasi yung hutos ng Amerikano na yun. Sabi ng Amerikano pa iiin daw yung 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 ini yung naiihi tapos ipakita daw sa camera. Nakikita ba kayo ng tao doon sa kasi may ginagawa yung pag sumuka na kayo, inaalis yung camera. Sa It's first time to me to hear it, so 
<laughs> I think we really need to let this story out because uh, we cannot afford to to make these things happen. Just see what what we just do. We rescue groups of girls who are actually the same. It's intended for the same trade. Despite originally being open and friendly with our crew, it became apparent the trauma the children faced wouldn't be forgotten. Did they mention in the conversation at all about what they think about Americans? Or how <laughs> I can they, ask or them. What they... Ano sa tingin niyo? Dahil Amerikano yung mga nanonood at nag-aabuso sa inyo, ano sa tingin niyo yung mga Amerikano na pagtingin niyo sa kanila? <laughs> You're maniacs. She said. Sorry to say that. She said that you are maniacs. <laughs> she begged you to stop. Said that you need to stop so that you you stop exploiting them. You can stop victimizing girls like them. They really strip the dignity, you know. Maybe next week, again, we were able to rescue again the same girls in the same situation, traffic for sex pornography. Um, this is unacceptable. As they stood together, arm in arm, the sky darkened. And a heavy thunderstorm swept over the valley. I thought back to when I was a child and what we called the rain. Tears from heaven. Okay, how did you feel po ba? Grabe no? Parang walang may. Ayan. So, ganun po no, ka-worst yung mga cases na nakikater natin. Actually, sa Center of Hope, ito po yung long-term shelter facility namin. As young as one year old, yung na-assist namin na binibenta online. And karamihan nga, yung parents din mismo, yung nagbebenta po. No? So, napaka-importante talaga yung role ng parents, di ba? So, instead na sila yung magbigay protection, sometimes sila yung nagiging traffickers and abusers. So, ito po, no, um, next po. Uh, sinasabi na yung prostitution nga has already evolved then so tayo po no Filipinos consecutively topping the world in terms of social media use agree po ba tayo dyan yung mga kabatid natin no ang liliit pa pero nasa internet na may access na sa social media and that makes our children vulnerable to online sexual exploitation. So, nandun po, no, nagmi-meet sa online yung mga predators online and then yung mga kabataan na natin na nasa online din yeah, next. So sinasabi po na yung Philippines is an is the global epicenter of the live stream and sexual abuse. So one in five Filipino children are vulnerable to online sexual exploitation. So dito po sa Pilipinas, yung mga big cities natin, sila talaga yung mga hot spots including Manila, Cebu, and Davao. Dito po sa Bicol, I know there are ano na din, huge cases na nare-report na mga victims of trafficking. So, ang dami-dami pong factors bakit merong OSEC. Una, siyempre, yung widespread na poverty. So, nagiging option po yung OSEC na maging source of income, di ba? Meron lang tayong internet access, meron lang tayong smartphone, makakapag-live na po tayo, makakapag-search na tayo. And siyempre, napaka-mura ng internet natin at yung mga smartphones. And isa po na factor bakit nagiging victim po yung mga bata natin kasi we have the ability to speak English well. Tama po? Di ba? Kahit sobrang bata pa, magagaling na mag-communicate. And also, we have the wide availability of money remittance centers. Ang dami nating Western Unions, etc. Ang bilis ng remittance ng payments ng mga predators natin. Ayan. So, during the lockdown, ito na-mention na rin po kanina na Sobrang tumaas yung USAE cases sa Philippines during the pandemic. 264% increase. Imagine, hindi lang kung ilang percent, no? Double, triple fold yung increase natin. This is according to the Department of um, Justice Cybercrime Unit. 
So ito po, ano po yung ginagawa natin to combat human trafficking? Kung hindi man natin fully ma-eradicate yung human trafficking, kami po sa Voice of the Free, ito yung ginagawa namin. We partner with various um, stakeholders kasi we do believe na no, no single organization can really address human trafficking. Tama po? So we partner with social civic groups, government agencies, faith-based organizations. Napakalaki po yung role ng mga churches natin, parishes natin in the fight. And of course, the schools. So, really happy na nakapag-organize po tayo dito sa Ateneo Dinaga involving ito nga yung mga kabataan natin. Ngayon, na meron na kayong awareness about human trafficking in general. And yung USAEC, nasa inyo na po yung role. Kung baga, paano yung i-disseminate yung learnings nyo today at paano din kayo makakatulong in terms of reporting. Pero yung sa reporting po natin, no, kasi we don't have the, the police power, wag po tayong mag-intervene, tayong gagawa ng rescue operation. No po. So, kailangan i-channel natin doon sa appropriate agencies. So, ito po, kailangan yung safety first din natin as ito yung nagre-refer ng case, di ba? So, meron mo tayong mga safety reporting mechanisms. So, wag po tayong mag-front. Don't worry, pag nag-report naman kayo sa hotline, sa ano naman po yan, anonymous. Hindi naman sasabi yung sino nag-report. So, importante no, no, yung safety din ninyo, tingnan nyo din. So, dito sa school, pwede mag-report sa guidance counselors or sa teachers, yung ganun. So, meron tayong mga champions within the schools. And syempre, uh, non-government organizations and vulnerable groups and communities. So, sila po yung mga katuwang natin. So, ito po yung tinatawag namin na iFight Movement. So, this is actually a platform for young leaders to connect, exchange knowledge, and report potential abuse through direct and social media engagement. So, kami po, no, nag-organize kami ng um, awareness orientation sa mga schools and then ginagawa namin siya na iFight chapters. So, you can initiate um, activities within the school. Yan. So, why the youth? Yun nga, um, though kayo ay isa sa mga vulnerable groups, pero kami, we do believe na you can make the difference. You can be involved or you can be our ally in the fight against human trafficking. So ito naman po, no, ito yung iFight movement. Pakita ko lang yung video and then later on, pwede natin gawin after the discussion. old ako magsimula magtrabaho ng cyber sex model. At yung pinaka-worst na pinapagawa nila sa akin ay yung pinapaharap ako sa kanila ng hibat. Walang damit, walang pambaba. At kung ano-ano pa yung pinapagawa nila sa akin. Ngayon, nag-aaral ako at mapala din akong nakapunta sa Amerika para ibahagi ang aking kwento, pati na rin ang kwento ng aking mga kapatid sa Center of Hope. I am Isa and I fight human trafficking. Human trafficking is a crime. It robs our women, men, and children of their dignity and human rights. Every year, 60,000 to 100,000 Filipino children are trafficked into sexual exploitation or forced labor. Ngunit napakarami rin po mga mapang-abusong tao na nag-aabang sa mga naghahanap ng trabaho para ma-recruit sa prostitution at pangaalipin hindi lamang sa ibang bansa, kundi pati sa ating bansa. So please stand up. Take your responsibility. Speak up. I know you have been taught to be polite, but you also have a responsibility. We must join the fight against human trafficking and modern slavery. Join the iFight movement.
Okay, ready na ba mag-join sa fight against human trafficking ang Ateneo Dinaga University? May dala po tayong boxing glove dito, yung gusto mag-join. Father, paano ba? Later na lang after an open forum or ngayon na? Okay, sige. So, ayun, um, may few slides pa actually, pero yun lang naman yung panawagan natin na everyone can really join the fight against human trafficking, di ba? Hindi natin pwede sabihin, istudyante lang ako, kabataan lang ako, wala akong magagawa laban human trafficking. Malaki po yung role ng mga kabataan natin, okay? So let's maximize social media, di ba? Lahat tayo into social media, gawin natin yan na platform to raise awareness din mga kabataan katulad natin. Kasama ako doon. Ayan, so that ends my presentation. Thank you. So I would like to see you Ateneo Dinaga University joining the fight against human trafficking. Thank you so much po. So, mukhang engaged yata na ang lahat, no? How, how did the short video clip made you feel? And I hope that will be like, you know, a fuel to us to um, motivate us to really be, I'm not sure of the word, enraged, no? Na magalit din tayo, no, sa issue na ito. Na hindi lang sa kanila, sa Archdiocese, or sa I fight movement laban natin tong lahat no hindi, hindi dahil uh, estudyante lang kayo lahat tayo involved dito sa usapin ng human trafficking and on that note may I ask father um, you know that we also you know move forward i mean really stand up for this issue on human trafficking so there are hand gloves there here who would like before i say my word of thanks our word of thanks for uh, our speaker Ma'am Lucenia, Lucenio. Father Jonans and Ma'am Glo. Word of thanks na agad. <laughs> so siguro po before we do the last part po, no? um, we also participate in this uh, movement, in this advocacy. So we'll be requesting everybody na isigaw yung ating slogan, Ma'am help. <laughs> Ano ang sabihin natin? O, siguro si Sir, tapos we, 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 ano? Okay, so yung chan po natin kanina, no? I fight against human trafficking. I fight, I fight, I fight. So kung kaya po natin na mas energetic, mas malakas, go. Di ba? Hindi sa ating matatakaw yung traffickers kung wala tayong energy. Okay? So, sample lang po, no? Sabay-sabay tayo. I fight against human trafficking. I fight, I fight, I fight. Okay? Trial. Okay, one, two, three, go! I fight against human trafficking. I fight, I fight, I fight. Okay, so mamaya pag magre-record tayo, mas malakas, mas energetic. Okay? Sige po. So, request po natin yung mga key, ano na natin, partners to wear the gloves. Tayo po tayo lahat, tayo tayo, sabay-sabay po. Oh, practice ulit, practice. May mga gloves sa gitna. Okay, yung may mga gloves mo sa gitna, mga sir, mga madam, yan, lakasan. I fight, I fight. Oh, ati girl sa gitna. Abanti na, abanti na nini, ita Christmas na. Ayan. Saroon daw na makusog na upak. Sabi makusog, makusog na upak. Hep, hep. Hep, hep. Okay, so ang chant natin ay I fight against human trafficking. I fight, I fight, I fight. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go! I, I fight, fight against human trafficking. trafficking. I fight, I fight, I fight! Puro pa ka. <laughs> okay na? Ah, o practice lang pala yan, practice lang. Dapat mas magaling ano? 
Ang mga tinista, hindi lang maganda, magaling pa. Amen? Amen! Oh, again, otro, girare, otro, otro. Three, two, one, go! I fight human <laughs> Very good. Pwede na ba yun? Pwede na? Pwede na ba tayo? Okay. So, Girare po, salamat na Maray. Matukaw po kita. Matukaw. Yan po. So. Ah. Again, I'd like to thank, uh, we'd like to thank Ma'am Cheryl Losenio for sharing to us a grounded perspective in looking at this urgent social issue and inspiring us through their advocacy to be with them to fight for these victims and protect those who might fall victim into this um, on this human trafficking may i once again call ma'am cheryl and ma'am glo father jonans to present this token Simple token of appreciation and certificate for her valuable knowledge and time in sharing to us the things that she knows. Allow me to read um, the citation. Certificate of appreciation is awarded to Ms. Cheryl M. Losenio for sharing her time and expertise as speaker during the St. Josephine Bakita Lecture Series on Freedom, Identity, and Discipleship in partnership with Atene Dinaga University Theology Department with the topic, I Fight to End Human Trafficking and Modern Slavery. Given this 10th of February in the year of the Lord 2023 at the Atene Dinaga University, Naga City, signed, Ma'am Gloria C. Antonio, Chair Theology Department, Father Jonas Vibar, Chairperson of CAUCP, and Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Tirona, OCDDD, Archbishop of Cáceres. Once again, we give Ma'am Cheryl a round of applause. Thank you, Ma'am Cheryl, once again. Now, friends, we still have a few minutes. Um, we would really love to hear your thoughts, your insights, especially those who are here on site, as well as those who are online. Please share to us, no, for those who are online watching us through uh, their respective homes and those who are you know, uh, watching through the, the live stream of the Archdiocese of Caceres FB page, please share to us your questions, your insights, your realizations through the chat. And for those who are here on site, uh, may I, you know, encourage the students who are here, the students of Sir Mark, Sir Ramji, Sir Bob, Sir Janzi, and my students, if you are here, to please share your thoughts to us this morning. You can use the microphone here in front, okay? Or uh, we have ashrets, ushers and ashrets going around, distributing pieces of papers. If you are quite shy, to come up here in front and share your questions. Also, um, I heard that there is one reactor who can share his or her uh, takeaway from the three sessions, three talks that we heard earlier. Okay? So as you are gathering your thoughts, you know, while waiting for you to come up here in front and share your questions. I will not call you anymore, just please, no, come, come up here in front. All right. May we now hear from Bali. Um, hi po. Good morning, everyone. A uh, short uh, realization lang po and reaction to our seminar this morning. I think it's, ano, uh, let's challenge ourselves na lang to um, reflect whether there were instances in our personal life na medyo na-objectify natin ang isang human person na pwedeng na-misuse natin or na overuse or probably na abuse ang kanilang pagiging mabait sa atin wherein kasi um, if we would look to the very basics of, of human trafficking it is that idea of um, degrading the dignity of the person by abusing him in in any circumstance not only through uh, prostitution sexual exploitation or forced labor so i think uh yun ang maganda nating uh, after this talk, let's see if 
in our own ways, we have already um, participated in that uh, abuse. And then let's challenge ourselves to do away with it so that we would not anymore contribute to the growing spread of that um, problem. Po. Thank you, Pope. Thank you, Barry. Barry is a religious education major of the theology department. So please, you know, if you, uh, before you share your question or insight, please introduce yourself, your course in DEER, and what else? Um, yeah, just the course in DEER. <laughs> that will be fine. Anyone else who would like to share? Questions? Our two speakers are still here. And Mom Glow or Father will answer if you have question for the first speaker. Oh, the, the first speaker is also here. Any question? Are those online? Do we have questions? Or sharing through the online? Participants? Do we have some? So I can read these for the rest of us. Any, any more question? Any from the teachers, from the faculty who are here? Any thoughts from the students plus 10 points of prelim exam? <laughs> Nag-usap na kami ng mga teachers ninyo. <laughs> Sige po, lugod ma'am, to my 10 points. Claim ko na po. Thank you, so, Matt. So, um, um, just like Barry, um, and by the way, my name is Matthew. You can call me ML for short, or M for shorter. Uh, A-B-R-V-E, just like Barry. So, um, I would I would like to speak um, in the perspective of um, my education na as a part as part of the theology department na ever since like um, for like longer than or, or more than for more than fifty years now um, uh, the magisterium has been calling for a uh, climate, a, a cultural climate that is favorable to chastity. That has been the invitation of uh, popes like Pope Paul VI and as mentioned by Sir Giriba, uh, Pope John Paul II. So this is a challenge for us to give a proper diagnosis to the kind of culture that we're living right now. Why is it that in our modern culture, things like this have been enabled? Uh, where did we go wrong? So just like what Barry said, na parang this is a good time to look at ourselves, to reflect upon what we have done and what we can do. So, uh, na mention nga kanina na parang uh, the internet can be a curse. Siguro a few years ago, it takes time, money, and effort to procure pornographic materials. But now it takes time, money, and effort just to avoid pornographic materials because uh, all, all you have to do is just one click and then you are taken to a particular site na because you participated in it nag tumataas yung demand for exploitation so just like what Barry said this is a really good opportunity for us na parang to give a diagnosis and then because of that diagnosis na nakuha natin um, we can use that as a springboard to act and to uh, fight for the dignity of human beings so that we will have to realize that persons are meant to be loved and they are not meant to be used. Sabi nga, sabi nga ni Moira de la Torre, ako ang kailangan pero di ang mahal. Mapanakit kasi parang ginagamit lang tayo or yung mga victims pala ng abuses na parang they are being treated as objects. So, matuto tayong magmahal na lang. Period. Thank you po. I still choose to call you Matt. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, and it's very timely, especially as we celebrate next week. Ano bang meron? Sa Tuesday. You know? Hearts Day, Valentine's Day. So, na maramdaman natin na tayo talaga yung pinili dahil tayo yung mahal, hindi lang kailangan, ba? 
at sana ganun din yung gawin natin sa ating kapwa na piliin nating magmahal piliin magmahal at mahalin thank you so much one more please we still have a space for one more share yeah we have one please introduce yourself thank you Uh, so, good morning po. I'm Precious Sinya Y. Apuya, a third-year BS Accountancy student po. So, hi guys. Um, so, coming here po in this webinar, I uh, actually, I already have quite an idea about what human trafficking is. But I never thought na very shallow pala yung knowledge ko about doon, yung awareness ko about doon. Because uh, all this time, I thought na... Uh, Yun, human trafficking is a crime and that it's very prevalent in the Philippines. But I never really imagined how deep human trafficking is and how deeply rooted it is, especially in the context of the Philippines. Now, it's not just a crime, but it's rooted in different societal issues, just like poverty. And even, parang it, it is also affected by our culture, the culture of victim, uh, victim blaming, the culture of needing to provide for one's family, the culture of like even our characteristic of being able to speak English is one of the contributing factors on why human trafficking is prevalent here in the Philippines. So I really believe that this, uh, this seminar is very timely because each and every one of us, is, as the youth, as the youth of today, the hope of the future, we really need to be aware of these facts, of this realization so that we can put a stop at least in our own little ways, in when it comes to human trafficking. So it's for me then po, it's very important kasi especially with technology, it was already emphasized then. But medyo share ko lang na ano na aside from the preva uh, prevalence of technology as a means or as one of the facilitators in human trafficking, uh, it's also very important for us to be literate in this sense. Kasi uh, I've read some articles na. Uh, there are those who are hiding human traffickers or hiding transactions in human trafficking in terms of codes. You, even in social media, like in TikTok and Facebook, they're already using codes uh, in order to hide the fact that they're facilitating transactions, etc. And as uh, as the youth or as students na exposed to social media, we also need to be vigilant so that you simply na pag-scroll natin sa social media like sa TikTok, we can actually uh, have our own way of helping to know kung ano ba yung parang warning signs of what could be the indicators of human trafficking and such. And it really shows how hard it is to contain human trafficking. Even tackling the issues itself, the legal nuances, and even the uh, the entire concept is very hard. But I think it's a very important call to each and every one of us, especially us Athenians, Now we are taught Kura Personalis, uh, Kura Personalis, we are taught to be men and women for and with others. So even if uh, at the very, uh, at the very, uh, so even if na parang hindi tayo directly affected, we are also called by our Ignatian leadership, our Ignatian uh, spirituality. Now we really need to have a role in this, uh, in this very very important issue. And if there's one thing na pinaka na take away ko dito is what Sir Mark had said. Uh, Kanina, na creation of laws alone cannot solve the problem because create uh, because creating laws and implementing laws and making it work for the people are entirely different things. That is why even if we have the protection of the law, it comes down to our collective action. Collective action, because one person cannot uh, one person can only do so much. But if we can unite as a youth, uh, yung mga nandito sa atin, I'm sure that we can make a change in one way or another. So ayon. Uh, for thank you very much po sa pag-organize ng, uh, ng seminar na ito. It was really timely and I think it's a message that everyone needs to know and needs to hear and it's a call for us to answer. It's a call kasi we, uh, it has to come uh, from us. We, uh, we cannot be like coerced na 
to do something about this. We need to see the value. We need to see how important and how important and how critical this issue is. Because this is not just about ourselves. This is not just about the victims, but it is also about preventing other people from falling victims to this, and also for those victims to achieve justice justice na not just making those people liable but also protecting others from uh, from making this issue uh, big enough uh, para making this issue worsen na as we can see in our society it's already worse so yon i i hope na each and every one of us here will have the parang will have the will or will uh, I hope each and every one of us here magkaroon ng will or maybe even like an inspiration to do something and yon even if kagaya nga ng sinabi kanina even as students we can do so much and by taking the step forward to do something about it it's already a big leap for humanity much more if mas maraming tao the youth the elderly and all of us here in the Philippines can do something about it so thank you very much po so i fight against human trafficking i fight i fight i fight Thank you so much, Precious. Really, what you, your words, no, what you said are really precious for us. And uh, yeah, her, uh, she's admonishing each and every one. Are we taking on her lead? Are you leading us, <laughs> Precious, to fight against human trafficking? So there, no, let us be the voice. Okay, because um, although there are agencies around, the NGOs present, no, the I Fight movement, and all these... But, uh, you know, we are an archipelago. We, they cannot, you know, just simply do the fight by themselves alone. They need us. Especially us here in Bicol, we are a peninsula. And often we are like the highway to the trafficking. So, you know, we can, you know, we can do really something no? uh, that can spell the difference no? in this fight against human trafficking. Do we have a question from the online? None so far. All right. Uh, any one more? Or are we good? Are we good? All right, now to at this point, before we come to a close, may I call in Father Jonan Zvibar, Director of Cow City, for some words of thanks and for the final blessing. Father Jonan. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Hello, po. Just maray na aga sa inyo kapos mga tugang. Turug na tulos. Diyos maray na udto sa inugabos. Iyan. Dawa may pangutuhan. So, I'm supposed to give a closing remarks, but Princess was already uh, already able to summarize everything. Ano? Salamat, Princess. Salamat. Ah, testing ko lang kayo. Nakikinig pala kayo. <laughs> si Precious pala. <laughs> my Precious. So, thank you for that. Thank you for the gospel for today tells us about the episode where Jesus binulog niya sa mabae. Anong sabi niya? Ephata. Be open. And I think the Holy Spirit did its part. Binuksan ng satuyang mga mata. Binuksan ng satuyang mga puso. Upakan po niya ito lang bang saro. Huwag niyong tipirin. Dagdagan niyo pa. Iyan. Thank you. So, Yan, siguro po on my part, pasasalamat na lang po sa ngaran po kang satuyang namumutan na arsubispo. Papasalamatan na po mga nagkapirang. Enot po ang Ateneo Dinag University headed by Reverend Father Roberto Rivera SJ sa gabus po na pa, sa pagtugot po kang partnership na ini. Salamat po kay Ma'am Digna Alba, Dean of Humanities and Social Sciences. Kay bahan man po si Ma'am Gloria San Antonio, ang chair po kang Theology Department together with the Faculty of Theology Members, Ma'am John and Company, Sirs, thank you very much. Upakan po niya ito, Sinda. Yaon man po, through our live streaming team, yaon man po ang Casares Commission and Communications, headed by Father Louis Oxiano. Um, kaibahan po ni Manny Daddy Bien, as in Manny Tupet Cruz. Kaibahan man po ang CAUCP Documentation Team, Faith, Tala. Ang mga volunteers mi po, May mga volunteers po kami din mga students, faculty. Salamat po for coming. Sagbus po na collaborators na naging instrumental, tanganing maging uh, successful po ang satuyang 
event. Nakadim light po kita ano. Ngunyan lang na nangyari niya ano. Nakadim light tayo. Huwag tayo masyado maliwanag ano. Ah, magi ma- ang sa induman lugod na mga boses, mga puso iyong magliwanag sa bilog na kinaban. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, sa tuyo po mga speakers, Doc, Ma'am, Sir, Madam, salamat pong maray. Um, ang sa dito pong boses, nakarating hindi lang po dito sa atin Bicol, hindi lang sa Archdiocese, even sa Manila, and all the live streaming is being also shared sa other platforms, even internationally. Inter- international ang beauty ni Madam. No, inhulita ang movement ang sa tuyang efforts against human trafficking. We need everybody's help. So, sa mga parokya po na nagdadalan sa mga simbahan, padagos po ang sa tuyang pagbantay, pagantabay sa sa tuyang mga kakian. As in man po, dako lang pasalamat sa intercession kan sa tuyang patrona ni Santa Josefina. Si Santa Josefina mismo naging biktima kang slavery, human trafficking. sexual exploitation gabus iyan alagad ginamit na tanga ni maging kusog asin makapag-inspirar sa gabo sa mahal na Dios sa dari na pagantabay sa satuya gabos Dios mabalos po sa inyo gabos urupakan po giraray doang bagay lang po if interested po kita sa i fight advocacy na ipadagos ini pwede po kita mag form kan sa tuyang Um, ang tawag ni ma'am, group dito, sector, chapter, i fight chapter, digdi po, we are very much willing to assist you. Si mga gusto pong maging active volunteers kan sa tuyang uh, opisina, kan ka OCP, Casares Office for Women and Children Protection, welcome po kamo. As long as legal age po, ano, legal age muna tayo. Um, we are very much uh, willing to welcome you po. Pwede kang mag-approach ki ma'am, ma'am Glo, member po natin yan, or ki ma'am Lani, sa site department. Salamat pong marhay sa Indo. As in, giraray po, padagos kami nagpapagirumdom na ang banuwaan ng masasarigan, nagpapadangat sa mga kababaehan as in kakian, kasurog, an kalalakihan. Giraray po, Diyos mabalos sa Indo Gabos. Matindog po ang Gabos for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Please be seated for a while daw po. May, may parafol yata si Ma'am. Sorry. Uh, we will post the um, link for your evaluation and insert. Okay po? So, um, how do we do this? Are we posting it already on the Archdiocese and uh, FB page? Yes, already. So, for those who are joining us online, please check, check it out, no? We have already posted on the the link on the um, Archdiocese and FB page. Of course, naka join kayo dyan, no? And for those who are here, meron ng uh, code. Ano po? Is that the code for evaluation? JR? Yes, that's for evaluation. Okay. You can get your snack. Sorry, ha, hindi namin kayo pinapalabas. But yung mga lumabas kanina kasi gutom na, tinatraffic namin, pinaiinom namin ng coffee, ng water, at saka pinapakain namin ng lava. Cake yun, no? Yun yung pangalan ng cake. No? Please get one of your share. Okay, kung wala ng bottled water, meron doon coffee, kuha kayo ng paper cup, no coffee, and then... Uh, or water. No? Meron naman dispenser doon. Meron pa ba? Wala na. Thank you very much kay Father Jonans. And to all of you, our dear students, thank you so much. God bless you. Bye. Uh, picture lang daw po tayo with the uh, with